All right, I believe we are live. <laughs> I would cry in for 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, we are live, so I'm going to start. Um, welcome, everyone. It's Thursday, March 28, 2024. This is the School Building Advisory Committee, 5.30 p.m. in Town Hall. Um, tonight, we're going to hear a lot from Lisa from Harriman uh, on updates on the three options. Um, but before we do that, we're going to approve minutes, get any reports and correspondence, have a chance for public comment, then turn to Lisa and uh, Chuck, our um, from Turner Townsend Heary, and then we'll get a communications update from Michael, and then finally a finance update from Larry, um, and then make sure we've covered any key decisions that we needed to make tonight, and talk about the forum next week, public comment, and adjourn. So, a lot to do, um, but I think we'll we'll get through it well. Um, so, thanks for coming, everybody. Appreciate all you do on a SBAC Thursday, as I've come to call it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Matt, are we all set with membership? Yes, sir, Dr. Record. We have a full quorum here this evening with Mr. Thompson uh, attending us in a virtual format. Thank you very much. And can I get a motion on the minutes from the previous meeting? Motion to approve minutes. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Indicating all in favor. Unanimous, so, sir. Good, good, good. All right. Reports and correspondence. Any reports or correspondence anyone wants to share? Seeing none, just go ahead, Matt. Just one, Dr. Record, um, just to, to be advised that the Finance Committee, uh, Subcommittee will have a meeting on Tuesday of next week at 4 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room. Yep, spicing up and switching it up to a new day, so 4 p.m., Jordan Conference Room, and uh, Joe Cotaro will be joining us that day as well, so we'll be looking at you know, some of the results of the work that was done this evening from, uh, from Harriman Associates and Turner Townsend Heary. Uh, and the numbers that they'll that we'll be having, and Joe will have the opportunity as soon as those are firm to work on those over the weekend, and we can look at some of the different modeling that he has there. So it'll be a, a you know mostly a, a math oriented uh, event. But uh, please, if you have the opportunity, please put that in your on your dance card. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports, correspondence? I know we'll hear from uh, communications and finance later on in the meeting. All right, chance for public comment. Anyone present here want to make comment? Uh, anyone online? No, sir, not uh, with a hand raised. We're good to go, sir. So we will have a chance. What did you say? We will. Tim, can you hear us? Just making sure, Tim Thompson, can you hear us online? Maybe that's a no. Maybe that's a no. Well, just one moment. Uh, Mike Ensmeer, I just asked you to unmute. Could you? Uh, yeah, I can hear you guys. Thanks. Hey guys, I can, I can hear you fine. Sorry for the delay. Thank nope, you, fellas. No problem. Thank you. Good check there. Uh, anyone public comment online? No, sir. Okay. So there will be a chance for public comment at the end of the meeting. So save your comments and questions for then. Uh, Lisa, welcome back. Thank you. Um, we're excited to get your update on the three preferred options, and I think you want us to help make some choices tonight. Absolutely. So, welcome. Excellent. My Crone doesn't want to stay put here. Um, good evening. Good to see everyone. Um, we have an update on the three options, um, and we're going to keep tonight structured. Uh, the first half of the presentation is all on new information as well as action items we need from the committee. The second half of the presentation is really the bones of creating the forum um, and uh, that will happen next week. Um, we're not gonna go through that in detail. It's in there for you to reference. It's in there for you to be able to look at, provide feedback, um, but you can start to see we're building it just like we have in the past um, for information. Um, Okay, and then the other thing is, I'm just gonna ask that uh, the committee hold their questions to the end of the first half of the presentation. We'll go through all the information and happily go back to any of the slides um, for certain um, uh, reference materials if needed. Um, but uh, try, try that method tonight to see if we can uh, make, make our time together a little more efficient. Um, the agenda, so, uh, 
schedule impacts. Um, uh, we'll go over the impact of the May 9th. Um, the request to move the May 2nd vote uh, from three to one options and moving that to May 9th. We're gonna show you what those schedule impacts are. We talked a little bit about this, anyone that was at the communication committee this morning. Um, <clears throat> we'll go over the intent of tonight's meeting and what we are reviewing with you, what feedback and direction we need tonight. Um, we are up against, um, as always, a, a tight deadline, but what we are up against is the ad. The ad needs to be formatted. Um, technically, it should be done tomorrow. We've gotten an extension till Monday. Um, but it was going to be quite challenging to even get it done for tomorrow. So we need the decisions tonight to be able to inform what those three options have in them. Um, we have given preliminary costs to Matt and his team to start on the impact, the tax impact. But some of the decisions tonight are going to impact those costs. So we need to be able to get him and his team updated information to turn that information around. Um, because if you remember, that is in the ad as well. Um, auditorium scope and modified concept B and C. Um, what, one of the things we're going to decide tonight is what we're calling these options. Um, so I need to walk away from this meeting understanding what these three options are called. Um, but in whether you call it B plus, C minus, or modified B or C, or concept B or C. Essentially, we're talking about that renovated uh, existing cafeteria and what that is going to look like um, and how it would function as an auditorium. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I've, we've put together a table as to what has changed since the last time we met in options B, C, E3, and E3.1. We're gonna go over any new scope in the high school scope of work. Um, and the big thing we need to walk away with from tonight's meeting, the two big things are, what is the high school scope in the options? And what is included for E? Is it E3 or is it E3.1? Um, so that we can uh, put that information together going forward. Um, we have updated the matrix uh, that we had presented last time talking about the differences between the three options. We've, we've modified that, we've condensed it. I think we went from seven slides to four. Um, we have draft language for the ad and then the proposed draft forum content. Again, that's the last half of the presentation, so half of these slides are really that. We're not gonna go over that in full detail, um, but I encourage folks to kind of leaf through those, see if there's anything that jumps out, but it's the same format we've been using on all of the community um, presentations and forums um, uh, to date. Um, and then next steps, so tonight's outcome will impact the cost of each concept. So we will come out of this meeting starting first thing tomorrow morning, updating cost uh, to Matt and his team for tax impact, updating the ad and updating the presentation for April 4th. All right, schedule impacts. Um, there was a request, like we said, to move a couple dates around. Um, and uh, essentially what we were looking at is this May 2nd date right here where my, my cursor is. There was a request to move that one week uh, for very, very good reasons. Uh, it has to do with the timing of the survey, um, when those surveys are going out to the public, when you're getting comments back, having adequate time for collecting that information, also being mindful of how um, different breaks are falling um, and when folks will be in and out of town. By moving that a week, that really condenses us even further than we had been condensed. So we need to move each meeting thereafter one week. Um, we, uh, as we said last time when we adjusted the schedule, we already felt it was condensed and it was the, the most heroic effort that we could do within that time period. Reducing it anymore isn't possible. So moving everything one week, and we had a conversation about this in communications this morning. It seems like that is, in the group that was there, a uh, generally accepted uh, approach. We would be moving the school board meeting to, I think you said the 28th, was that correct? I believe that's right, Lisa, yeah. the end of Ju uh, July. Yeah, 28th of July. And there's a bunch of meetings in July. We have to get in front of uh, this group here, the school board, the town council. So. Um, we had started those meetings July 11th. They will be starting July 18th, possibly 25th, 28th, depending on those different groups. Um, but that means May 9th would be when you vote. Um, 
May 23rd would be the next meeting where we provide an update on the option. Um, it was requested that you had updated costs for the next forum in June. So we have essentially two weeks from when you vote to develop that option, turn it over to our estimator, and get ready for now a June 13th forum. They can't hear. Yeah, it's just the panelists that can hear us, but the members of the public. I'm sorry, Lisa. That, no, you're fine. I guess if you're anybody. We don't have any. We do not have any panelists. Someone may have a problem with theirs at home. Well, we're on CETV, so at least that's an option for all of you. Yeah, that is true. But I mean, because no, yeah, because I will say no one, like, like even Mike and Tim are both, uh, they're not panelists. I just make them available to unmute. Right. Um, I'll just, my, I, I know that it's frowned that we've had discussions about this, but while I was reading this email, my husband just texted me that he is uh, he can hear fine, so maybe this is just a specific Mike, person. Mike, and you can still hear us fine, right? Back. I can still hear you loud and clear. Okay. Thank you. You are our uh, you are our canary, sir. <laughs> so thank you for your help. No yeah, Caitlin, it could be a technical I'll, issue on the user's end. I'll be able to. I'll respond to them. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. So. So the, in, uh, the schedule update, so then town council will be moved to the 17th, SBAC moved to the 27th. Um, so I think you understand moving that one week, everything slides out. Can I, Lisa? Um, one of the things on the schedule, and I know this is prior to the night, but um, the activity that we have identified on the 25th discussion of uh, public feedback, I don't think that happens then. I think that happens on the second. Do you agree, Michael? Um, I'm sorry, say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading the, uh, Mr. Hussey, please pay attention in class. Um, what I'm thinking is we will have received a survey uh, back uh, they're due on what the 22nd or 23rd yes yes so therefore the 28th of uh, April isn't when we would be reviewing the results because we may not have it then mean it would the 20, be 25th will now be May 2nd it would be the second I, I think the second is the drop dead date there's a chance we'll have it prior to and it's a lot depends on like, how quickly we can get things out the door. And that's what, I thought our point of pushing things out to the 9th was to give extra time so we didn't have to come back on the 22nd. Also, which well, is to mitigate the risk of not having it by break. then. Because there's a yeah. serious risk that we won't have enough. I think we back. should, yeah, I'm, I'm just going that if we, yeah. we're playing out this timeline, then let's give it the amount of time and let's use this on uh, May. I agree. Second. I just, right. my yeah. point, my, I guess my. My basic point is the sooner Portland Research Group do the analysis, the better. That said, there's basically no chance, very, there would be almost no chance we would be able to have it completed if we didn't move. Mm -hmm. So. Would, you, would it be ready to review on May 2nd? Yes, that's. Okay. And that I think that's like, what you're that, saying. That's my yeah. point. That's my, okay. that's the goal. Yeah, that's my point. We, we do. So that, we'll gives update enough, this. that gives us enough leeway to make sure that He's fully right. ready by the so second. The 28th meeting, we yeah. just need to talk about whether there's an. So it's the 25th on this slide. It may be a 28th. I mean, 25th. Course, but I'm the 25th sorry. will become May 2nd. Right. That's okay, my so point. everything from May 25th yeah. pushes out. That's, a week. that's correct. Yep. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Good. It should be, he should be deep in the analysis by the 25th, but I wouldn't expect him to have it ready by the 25th, which is why we pushed. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I just want to. Adjust my schedule. <laughs> um, so in the, um, that's the schedule update, the intent of tonight's meeting. Um, we've uh, gone over some of this already, but coming out um, of this, we're gonna make those updates at the top of the screen that you see. Um, we must have final direction on the following items by the end of tonight. Naming convention of options and concepts. Scope of modified concept E. High school scope to be included. 
matrix information. This was in here. At one point, we were doing an insert in the flyer with this matrix. If that is no longer the case, then we don't have to spend a ton of time on this. Um, if, uh, if it is, then, then we do need to, to work through some of that. Um, we have draft text for the ad and determine if the dashboard is to be included in the ad and presentation going forward. All right, we're gonna jump into auditorium. This is a review of what we have done uh, or developed for the auditorium. I'm gonna walk folks through this. Um, where you see this red dot circling around, this is a floor plan. Um, this, where my dot is coming back and forth is the middle school main entrance. This is your cafeteria that is shared by elementary middle school. This is your kitchen. This line right here is the line of the existing stage. So based on the feedback we got from the music program, um, they want to have a stage that can accommodate at a minimum 100 students with instruments. Um, so uh, we reviewed the drawings. This is not a structural wall. We have moved the stage out to this wall here, created a new proscenium and thrust. This allows us, this is a, a layout of seating for a orchestra band um, on stage. Um, and I think there's a hundred, uh, I know there's 111 seats on this stage right now as drawn. Um, so then we look at, okay, once we do that, the remaining portion of the uh, existing um, uh, cafetorium, um, right now you have levels, different levels in here. We took the mid-level and we chose that as the floor. So we have um, increased, uh, we have built up the floor here um, to essentially make this level across here. And for flexibility, um, we have incorporated um, theatrical retractable seating. That's what you're seeing in section here and then in plan in this dark area here. So similar to like bleachers, these can push back to the wall. They are, have much nicer finishes um, uh, than you would in a, in a typical bleacher. Um, they are uh, made for um, this type of application. Um, so these can be retracted. When they are pulled out, um, you, have about a, you have room for about another 60 or so chairs on the floor um, with maintaining all your different egress um, requirements out of this space. So, Seating, based on what is drawn, about 372 um, seats in this area, 111 students on stage. We've also made it to where when these are retracted against the wall, there is a folding partition here to where you could divide this space if the band wanted to come in and practice on the stage and there was something else that wanted to occur here. You include acoustical um, baffles and finishes within this space. Now, this does not accommodate the full middle school or the full elementary school. Um, right now, uh, you would need um, somewhere between four and 500 plus in order to accommodate each one of those separately. Um, so we looked at where else in the school could a large group gather, and we looked at the existing middle school gym. Um, Approximately, you have about 350 plus or minus seats in the bleachers, and then if you were to lay out seating on the floor, and that's, that's what these kind of rectangles are, uh, accommodating uh, flooring uh, seats on the floor, and when I mean seats, like foldable chairs um, with aisles, you could get about um, 500 plus or minus in here, so a total of 800, 850 in seats in that space. So that is the update on the auditorium. This renovation that you see in this space is included in the cost that you will see later for options B and C. All right, getting into what has changed. If we could hold questions to the end, I'm gonna go through everything and I'm happy to go back. Um, so this is what has changed since the last time we met, um, focused on the major things, site plan, um, main entry location, kindergarten edition renovation. Um, there was a lot of discussion about sizing of gym, sizing of band, sizing of chorus. We broke this on the two slides, Siz sizing of music room, sizing of stage. We talked about having an auditorium, 
um, or we have an auditorium renovation that we just went over. We talked about an auditorium um, addition as an alternate for the middle school. Um, and then um, at the high school, there was the change there is a multi-purpose space, so a testing center um, uh, slash achievement center addition. Um, and I'm gonna go back up and go through each of these, but uh, an option or concept option B plus, really no change to the site plan, no change to the entry. Um, for the kindergarten addition renovation, and just to remind folks, this is to right size the kindergarten classrooms and an addition of one classroom, because once we renovate, we need more space to get that sixth classroom. Um, that is in the concept B plus as an alternate right now. Um, and uh, we'll show that to you when we get into the pricing. Um, the gym, no change. Band, no change. Um, we put in what the delta is compared to what they requested for size. So right now in B plus, we're using your existing spaces. Um, as is, we have a delta of almost uh, 1,900 square feet for the band space, um, slight, slightly over for the chorus space in B plus, and then um, a little bit over in the, the music classroom. Um, we have enlarged the stage. Uh, there is a request to bring that up to over 3,000 square feet. We laid out uh, 2,412, uh, gets you to that 100 um, uh, seats for the band. And then the auditorium reno is included in the base scope of B+. Um, and uh, there, the, I should have said this does not apply, but the auditorium ad alt is only for the new middle school. Um, so I'm gonna go back up to C-. minus. There is an updated site plan. We'll see that. A um, Couple things, um, why that was or modified was really because there was a long conversation last time about the entry to the middle school we have relocated that entry so that we are um, lessening the impact to the green space on, um, on the site, and we'll show that to you. We have included the kindergarten addition renovation in the base bid for C minus. No change to the gym. We looked at the renovation addition that we were doing for band, chorus, and music, and within the area to where we're adding on, um, we've made them as big as we can. Um, still, um, the band area is undersized, um, but the nice thing about this in C minus, and we'll see here in a minute, is that that band area is close to the renovated auditorium, uh, so the band could practice on that stage. Um, chorus, um, we're pretty much almost right on, uh, on the money for what was requested. Um, and it includes uh, storage, practice rooms, and we're off by about 80 square feet. Um, the, um, or no, I'm sorry, that's a typo. We're off by 200 uh, in uh, some change. Um, C minus um, in the middle school music area, um, we have almost 1,400 square feet. Um, this is a little bit larger uh, than what was requested. Um, and then in the stage, we have increased that to 2,412. Um, that is about 980 square feet less than what was requested by um, the, the staff, um, but we have shown that you can um, accommodate the number of, um, of band participants requested. The renovation in the auditorium is included in the base for C minus. Um, the auditorium addition ad alternate is not applicable. Now I'm gonna to go to the E. E, we have updated the site plan on both E3 and E3.1. The biggest change is we no longer have the two entrances into the site. We have connected the parking and drives on site because um, there was some concern about that second um, drive onto Scott Dyer Road. Um, and you'll see that in a minute. Kindergarten ad reno um, is not included in E3. Um, if, if you desire to put it on there as an ad alternate, that, that is a possibility. Um, Jim, um, the uh, middle school um, is sized to be a high school size court with 300 bleacher seats. Um, the band area um, is um, in alignment with what was requested from, from the staff. 
Um, the chorus is in alignment with what was requested from the staff, um, as well as music, and um, the stage accommodates the um, 100 seats uh, for the band participants. This does not have an auditorium reno because that kitchen cafeteria in the elementary school needs to remain as the cafeteria for the elementary school in E3. Um, but we did put in an ad alternate for a 450 seat auditorium. Um, and we've kind of outlined that um, on the site. Um, and then E3.1, the differences here um, between the two, there's more renovation, uh, sorry, more addition at E3.1 in the elementary school. Um, through that addition, we address the kindergarten right sizing in number of classrooms um, in, a, uh, uh, in the larger addition area instead of the small addition in the other school, uh, school options. The gym is sized to high school size court in the middle school, uh, new middle school with this 300 bleachers. Um, and similar to E3, we have um, met the um, requests for band, chorus, music, and the stage. Um, and we also have the auditorium at alternate. So those are the major changes that have occurred. Um, and now we'll take you through just the visuals um, to show you what we mean by that. Um, no, I talked about the high school. The high school has the uh, multi-purpose testing center addition and achievement center. Um, so updated plan C minus. Uh, this is Scott Dyer Road. Uh, to remind folks, C minus has a elementary school addition, middle school addition, um, a new uh, cafeteria kitchen addition, and then we have the addition that accommodates um, providing band, chorus, and music closer um, to the renovated auditorium and the kindergarten um, addition, as well as other renovations throughout. Previously, we had the addition for the admin right here. And if you remember, we had a bunch of parking and drives right on top of this field. Um, this option looks at putting the um, addition for the entry right here. Um, right where the existing band chorus music area was um, and provides a separate um, pedestrian access, but it uh, maintains a lot of the existing parking infrastructure um, and then the shared uh, drop-off areas. Um, so that is the, the major change there. Um, you will see in a lot of these site plans, as we're sharing kind of the detail, we have different you know, basketball courts that are showing up in, in different areas as well. Um, we'll point those out as we go through. But looking at, oh, looks like this one didn't get updated. Um, Emily, can you do me a favor? Can you go into the old slide and grab the data for this music program? I'll walk you through it and then we'll pull up the data because it's important. Um, the um, band chorus music. So this is uh, option C minus. And this is uh, the elementary school edition um, for the admin. This is that renovated um, uh, auditorium. And then this is the addition renovation to accommodate band music and chorus. And so band, um, we can't quite get everything in there and have all the circulation around it um, for the 100 seats within the band room. Um, again, the adjacency from band to the stage um, allows them the flexibility now to, to practice here. Um, and then we have music and chorus as well. And the table that we'll pull up here in a minute will show um, uh, the deltas um, versus the requested. And we'll, we'll circle back to that way we're pulling that up. Do you have it? Perfect. I think it's, thank you. There we go. All right. Um, so in this one, you can see in this table up here, this is the requested square footage from, um, from the staff. Um, we have, uh, 
indicated that we can size the band room for 3,600 instead of 3,850. But the actual square footage in this location is 2,000 square feet. So we're, we're undersized um, uh, from what was requested in that area by, by quite a bit. Um, and then the chorus um, were slightly undersized and the music area were, were slightly over. Um, we're, we're kind of penned in right here. We go any further this way. We can't really expand this room because of the cafeteria. The further we go this way, we take the daylight away from the cafeteria. Um, so the, uh, we found that, you know, or thinking that if the band can practice here, that helps with the undersized nature of, of this space. Um, and then these two rooms are within, you know, a couple hundred square feet from, from what was requested. But I just want folks to be aware that that doesn't meet exactly what they were looking for. Make sure that I have the right PowerPoint now. Yep, V5. All right. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to go on to um, the modified site plans for E3. Um, last time we talked a lot about a parking lot outside of, um, of the elementary school and we had shown this parking lot kind of coming over here, taking up a lot more green area. Um, we wanted to show what the need is for parking versus how much you could maximize it for parking, what that difference was. So right now this is what is needed for parking. You could increase it to here if desired or that could be kept for green space or basketball hoops and basketball courts and things like that. The other major change is before we had a road coming in over here off of Scott Dyer Road. Um, and that is no longer, we keep the same entrance point that you have today um, and we can access the middle school or the elementary school off of that drive. Um, and I know these are a little harder to read, um, but this is the um, elementary school that remains here when the middle school is built. Um, and so the new um, admin um, on this is over here, close to where the existing library is. And then there's that STEM edition and that kindergarten edition on E3. So to go through what has um, changed in E3, um, and again, this is one of the big things that we need to decide tonight is are we going forward with E3 or E3.1 as the option E um, for the three options. Um, the, the major difference um, here is uh, both of them have, have the middle school. Um, there is a light reno that occurs in the elementary school. Um, and then there is a um, addition uh, that happens right here. And to orient folks, this is the library. This is your existing elementary school main entrance. And so we're walking upstairs um, from where you do now over here, or you you're gonna access from the drives over here to get to the admin, which is in the orange, and then um, the library STEM world language um, renovation edition over here. Um, in this um, middle school, what's changed um, is we have right-sized the um, band, chorus, music, and stage, and gym based on the conversation we had last time. Um, and so, you can see the gym here. That is a high school size gym with the seats. Um, we have increased the stage size. Um, and then uh, these purple spaces over here um, are band chorus music. Um, so you can see the requested square footage versus the actual. And then you can see the delta. And we meet all of those areas. There's a, a um, you know, some of them are a little bit over, some are slightly under. The stage still accommodates the, the need for 100 plus students. Um, and um, we had determined that really 3,600 um, will meet the requirements for the band space, which is why you see a delta there. 
So on E3.1, very similar um, uh, to E3 in the site, but obviously uh, you can see a difference in the addition. So what's hard to read is, is this is your elementary school that remains here. This is your cafeteria, your gym, um, the classroom wing, kindergarten wing. In this option, we're replacing everything from here over, and your entrance is over here. Um, same idea with the site, though. If you come in, you can access drop-off for the middle school, um, or come around and access drop-off for um, elementary school. In, in plan, on at least to this level, looks very similar to E3. The big change is as you go up to the upper levels, um, <clears throat> the changes in the elementary school. This looks at removing everything over here. If you recall, these are the oldest sections of the elementary school, and it comes in and replaces it with a two-story elementary school classroom wing, a new admin, and then in the core here, you have a lot of your allied art spaces. Um, in the middle school, uh, same statistics of what we met for band chorus, music stage, and gym as talked about in the last meeting. Um, we've also indicated where you can do future additions for the classrooms at the end of the wing, um, just as a dashed line. Um, and we will plan, if, if you proceed with this, we will plan uh, for those additions, especially with systems and structure, um, to make that easier in the future. And then we have put a, um, a, a rectangle the size of the new auditorium at alternate here uh, and showing approximately where that could be done um, if you choose to do that now or in the future or even if you decide that it's a second question in your referendum. So new high school items. Um, pretty, pretty limited in what's new. It's this end of the building. So to orient you, this is the main entrance right here. Um, this is the administration office. You come into the core of the building and you turn right. And typically you would exit the building right here. Um, instead of exiting, we have put it in addition um, to where you have your 100 seat testing center. Um, you have uh, district programming, so one of the items is looking at all the district programming that's in the middle school, elementary school right now. There's two add alternates. There's one um, showing that it gets added on to the new uh, middle school or it gets added on to um, the high school. Um, and then the um, green box here is academic center. Um, and then this is uh, more district programming. Um, so we refer to this as the, the multi-purpose space that the, we heard from the staff meetings was what they thought was a very critical, uh, critical need. And this is a, a blow up of um, that specific area. Um, <clears throat> and you can see um, the square footages um, as well as the layout of those spaces. So information matrix uh, for modified concepts. Um, just to remind folks, nothing has changed here. This is the duration of the options. Um, I just put this in here to kind of frame the conversation around duration as well as relocation of students in the different options. Um, you can see the different months for the total duration. And in the notes, you can see that we are relocating students in options um, B plus and C minus, um, either uh, to uh, another portion of the school or off, um, off site um, or, or modulars. Um, and the E3 uh, is able to use just the existing um, uh, buildings as their swing space. So they build the new school, they move students in there, they use the existing middle school as swing space where they do the work on the elementary. So nothing new there. Um, this is, you've seen this, um, we have uh, taken another pass um, at modifying this, trying to get it as concise as possible. I'm sure there could always be work in making it more concise. Um, I'm not gonna go through all this, you guys know these, um, these options better than anybody. Um, but take a minute, just kind of scan through it. Um, if you see anything that jumps out that doesn't feel right or you have questions about, we can circle back to that um, uh, for sure. Um, the areas that we really fine-tuned um, 
in this since the last time we met are uh, really on this slide, the right size functional needs. So as things were being modified um, and adjusted, uh, we went back and made sure that all this text was correct and reflected different deficits or benefits um, that the different options uh, provided um, at the, um, the various schools. Um, so um, just to, to high level recap, B plus addresses um, probably the, the least amount of scope, C minus kind of mid and E3 the most. Um, and um, as you read through this, it, it really talks about how in this area on right size functional needs um, that really, um, uh, 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 you'll see that, um, that it's in that uh, uh, gradation of addressing that. Gathering collaboration hubs, agile flexible classrooms. This is probably another area we modified um, just to make it clear on the flexibility that exists within the different options. Um, and so definitely take a look, um, look at that. Um, the most flexibility, um, E3, um, mid flexibility, C minus, and, and the least in B3. Um, the, uh, let's see, layout modifications we've um, updated as well as to where different programs are being um, relocated and or addressed. Um, uh, keep in mind that um, not much happens to the existing um, music program in B plus. Um, but the auditorium is, uh, renovation is included in that. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things between the, the three, um, as well as um, E3 um, really has uh, uh, a lot of uh, layout modifications, obviously with a new school um, and E3.1 when you replace a good portion of that elementary school, but both B plus and C minus have layout modifications with the cafeteria kitchen. Um, we emphasize an outdoor learning and play, um, not only moving the middle school away from the street, but also that playground, um, relocating that playground next to the middle school so it's no longer out at Scott Dyer. Um, and then this is the master plan, which will now be called long-term planning summary. Um, and you'll see this in those diagrams that we did um, at our last meeting, um, and you'll see them in the presentation materials for the forum. Um, but this will walk you through um, uh, just the kind of sequence and thinking about the long-term planning if you were to implement any one of these options, and we broke out separately E3 and E3.1. And now we get into the heart of um, the newest information, the updated cost. Um, so um, our team, our, the estimators, uh, the OPM have all been working very closely um, to uh, get the scope of work identified, um, share that with uh, the estimating team and then review that and, and essentially reconcile that based on where we're at in design, which is uh, early concept. Um, we have broken this down in a couple ways. Um, there's four slides on cost tonight. One, I'm gonna walk you through the breakdown of cost for the elementary middle school options in B plus, C minus, E3 and E3.1. Um, the second slide I'm gonna walk you through is the high school um, and looking at um, the breakdown of repair items, renovations, new construction, and add alternates. And then the third slide is just starting to put together some packages and we may have this completely wrong but we wanted to give something for folks to react to um, you can see as we start to package certain things together and think about them in certain ways, what the bottom line um, could be. Um, and this package uh, we call the elementary middle school with full cooling and limited high school work or scope. And then another package, and these are really just playing with that full cooling without full cooling option. Um, considerations moving forward with the elementary middle school without full cooling and limited high school scope. With, there is a sub option you could explore um, in, in both of these, and that would be um, only doing cooling in the new middle school at E3 and not 
um, the elementary school. So that's something that could be considered as well. So I'll walk you through these. Um, the way we set this up is we have um, the cost estimates that are construction cost. Um, and then that is the materials, um, that is the labor, um, that is everything that it takes the contractor to build the building. And then we have soft costs, which are different fees, permits, contingencies um, on, on top of that cost. So what you're seeing here is what we call project cost, and that is construction and soft cost. Um, so for B+, plus, um, the scope that you saw last time, plus any of the modifications we talked about, the base bid is um, just around $58 million. Um, and then we look at the efficiency main incentives based on the base bid. So remember there is limited cooling in the base bid. There are certain spaces, library, admin, and um, summer program areas um, that would receive VRF um, uh, cooling. And there's incentives tied to that, so we back that out. But then in B and C, you need your swing space. Um, oops, I went too far. Swing space, which is estimated right now around a little over three and a half million dollars for the two years. Um, so when you add all of that up, that's, those are all technically base numbers because you need all of that. It's just over, it's about 61 and a half million dollars. Um, and the same, I'm just gonna go through the base bids and then we can, we can look at the, the alternates here in a minute. Um, C, um, C minus, um, base bid, and remember this has a lot more renovation um, than B plus, uh, just over $84 million. Um, and I wanna emphasize that these are rough order of magnitude, draft numbers, these are not final. Um, efficiency main incentives based on that, uh, about uh, a quarter million dollars. Um, and then the swing space is about the same. So that gets us to about $87.5 million. Concept E3, um, we, uh, concept E3 is the new middle school and the elementary school um, has a small addition and light renovation. Um, and that base bid is just about 98 million, um, about 160,000 in um, incentives um, and the swing space is not applicable. Um, so we're just over $98 um, million for the base bid in E3. And then in E3.1, this is the new middle school, replaced the oldest portions of the elementary school. Um, so in, in plan, it, it's a significant amount of, of the elementary school. <clears throat> and um, base bid, that's about 114 and a half million. Um, and then we back out the incentives, um, uh, projected incentives. Um, and then we're uh, pretty much 114 and a half million dollars for the base bid of E3.1 as it stands. Now, I want you to remember this is only elementary middle school scope. That's what this slide is. We're gonna talk about high school in a minute, but this is just for the elementary middle school scope. This does not include any cost for the high school. Um, so when we look at alternates, um, the alternates, uh, there's two related to cooling. There's one called full cooling and one called full cooling with backup heat. Um, right now in the existing buildings, you have heat already in lieu of going in and tearing all that out, we can use that existing heat as a backup heat, which is why we don't have a full cooling only number in this spreadsheet. Um, we, we did break it out just as full cooling without backup um, in these others, and then showed you the incentives. Um, and then we did a full cooling with backup heat, and you can see um, what that is across these lines, and then the incentives and the subtotal um, for um, those options. The other alternates are right-sizing the K-wing renovation and right-sizing the K-wing addition. And really those two go hand in hand. Um, and they are carried in the, S, in the ad alternates right now um, under B+. They, you could take these numbers and essentially apply them to E3 if you determine that that is something that you want to do in E3. Right now it's just not broken out in that um, itemized cost. The scope is included already. This right sizing is already included in the base of C minus. And when we do E3.1, that scope is already addressed in the additions that exist in the base bid. 
Um, the repair number that is carried for these is from zero to six years. Um, we have the numbers for six to 10, so we put them in there so you can see what they are. That's carried in this line as well. And then the auditorium addition at the middle school. Um, the, um, wanted to make sure everyone knows the base bit of renovating the auditorium in B plus and C minus is included in their base, but to do a new auditorium addition um, we put this on here so you guys have the data, um, uh, and that shows you what that cost would be to add that, and we have that dashed out, uh, outline on this um, plan. If you wanted to add three more, 300 more bleacher seats to the gym, um, it shows you what that cost would be. And then if you want to add the district program to um, the, um, to the middle school, the new middle school, um, the size of that and the cost of that addition is shown here. So that is the elementary middle school. So then we go into the high school considerations um, and we broke these out. We've kind of been calling it, I call it an a la carte, if you will. It kind of has a little bit, has everything broken out individually so you can kind of pick and choose and, and prioritize as needed. Um, we have uh, broken out the repairs zero to three years. We have broken out the repairs three to six years. Um, and then we have um, an add alternate down below like the others for the elementary middle for the six to 10 years. Um, the renovation, so this is, a, this is a subtotal right here of all these numbers. And this new construction is a subtotal of all these numbers. Um, so I don't want folks to get confused by that. But then we just gave them an item number. So in conversation, we can refer to them by their, by their number if we need to. Um, but we've talked about all of these um, items, the new items have been identified. Um, so you have your innovation center renovation, um, uh, which is essentially um, the, um, uh, when we take the um, academic center out into the addition, we're renovating that area as, as, as essentially an innovation slash student commons area. And then item 14 is a multi-purpose addition, which we showed you at the end of the building by the, addition, by the um, entry. Um, and then the other new item is the district program addition. Um, and so you can see the costs over on the right hand side. Again, these are project costs. This is construction and soft cost. So we put this together um, just as a starting place. Um, it's always easier to react to something than starting from a blank piece of paper sometimes. Um, so we put this together and said, okay, let's look at what if we uh, what if the committee said, you know, we have to do full cooling in the elementary and middle school, and we need to address the kindergarten renovation in addition, and make sure that the kindergarten classrooms are right-sized, and we need to um, start to um, work our way through the repair items at the high school, and we've heard loud and clear the locker room um, uh, equity um, for those spaces is important. Um, so we, we carried that in these options. So you can see we did the base bids and swing space, full cooling with, we did with backup heat, the incentives, and then we did the right sizing. So <clears throat> um, when you take all of, um, of that, you can see the subtotal. And then when you add the high school work, um, Actually, something's off there. There is an error in that number. My apologies. Excel didn't work to our favor. All right. So let's change that on the fly because we don't want that out there. Um, so we have the base bid at the 61, 4, 6, 9, 1, 2, 3. And then we have our full cooling, which is another 13, 868, 639. And then we have our right sizing of the kindergarten, which is another 2.3 million. Um, I'll do exact numbers here so we have it exact. 2313, 391. And 1031, 380. Um, so that, that 78682 is correct. 
Um, we just then, it looks like somehow, I don't know where the 70 came from, but then we'll add the high school scope below. So then plus the high school scope is 5578, 496. So that should be 84. I think that's the error with all three of them. It's the middle number is correct. It just has to have the high school added. Yep, I agree with you. Just clarify, D plus would be 84 million instead of 7392? Uh, B, that's B, hold on, I'll, pull, I'll put it back up in just a second and you'll see the difference. All right, so B plus is 84 million, 261, 029. The error was that it was showing as 70 million, and I'm not sure, sure why that was. Um, as we go through this, we'll look at the other numbers as well. It looks like something with the bottom is incorrect. It looks like the middle number is correct on all of them. The high school is added incorrectly. It's more like 131. Excuse me? So 196, 546, 541, plus 5, 5, 7, 8, 5, 1, 6. Apologize for this. Let's see, 109, 387, 991. Can you do me a favor, Emily? Can you add up those last two? I'm going to go through these, and, and Emily is going to feed me the updated numbers. So I just updated C minus. I'll take you through C minus. Um, but in the essence of time, Emily is going to add up the other ones. Just make sure that we're correct here. Um, so the base bid uh, for C minus is the 87.5 um, million. Um, when we add the full cooling, it's another 8.9 uh, 8 million. That brings us to the 96.5, and then adding about five and a half million to the high school, we're about 102. Um, Emily's updating E3. I'll take you through the top ones, unless you have it already. What were the last three? Right. Okay, so C minus, we went through, we're gonna go through um, E1, or E3, my apologies. E3, um, base bid um, of 98 million. Um, and then on this one, if we were to add the cooling, it's 11.3 million. That brings us to 109 and change. You add another five and a half for about 100 and just under 115 million for E3. And then in C, uh, concept E3.1, um, again, this is where we're replacing uh, uh, the oldest portions of the elementary school. Base bid is about 114 and a half million. Um, the full cooling um, add is just over 10 million, um, and that takes us to about 124.5 million plus five and a half million for high school, about 130 million, 130.2 million. Again, this is just us kind of taking things that we heard and, and putting together a matrix. You may decide certain things on here aren't important and you want to strike them or you want to add them. Um, so then we just looked at it one other way. Um, and um, the, the meat of what we're doing tonight is, is really getting one matrix that we're walking out of here with for B plus, C minus, and E3. Um, but on B, for this one, we just took out, uh, or sorry, we put in the full cooling. Or sorry, we took out, uh, my apologies, tripping over the WO without full cooling, 
Um, so this is without full cooling, same base number. The, the change is in the alternates. You no longer see that cooling number in here. Um, Emily, if you can just triple check, they're all right, okay. Um, so it looks like this was a carryover. Um, so this is without the cooling. Um, B plus is 70.3 um, million or 70.4 million. Um, C minus is 93.2 million. Uh, E3 is 103.5 million, and uh, E3.1 is about 120 million. Let's see what else we have. I'm going to jump over to the ad. Um, draft language for ad. Um, these are in here. Um, we, we would like you to read through them, uh, provide any edits, um, but I don't want to spend a ton of time um, editorializing this or um, wordsmithing this. If folks could read it, and um, I think probably the best thing is if we put together a Google Doc and ask for comments by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, so you have some time to kind of, not too much time, but some time to, to mull it over and then get back to us so that we can make those modifications. Yeah. This is for an ad or is this for the insert with the survey? Well, this is originally for the ad. Ideally, it would, it would maybe carry over into the insert as well. Um, but it does not include any mention of high school scope until that's determined, and it doesn't include any of the ad alternates language. So this is the max capacity for space that we have unless we decide to eliminate the kind of infographic bubbles for the ad. I would prefer text, personally. And that's what, today in this morning's meeting, it sounded like people were more in favor of kind of doing bulleted text and eliminating that. Is that the case for the ad as well? We were speaking purely about the insert. I mean, eliminating the picture entirely? Not the picture, the, um, the bubble, sorry, I don't have it, All those, it here, I'd the bubble. ball things. I'd rather be able to describe what we're getting and what we're not getting, and that takes space, and I, I think text is, that would be more effective than. If people are comfortable with text, I'm, I'm fine with that. I thought that the compromise position could be, and I should have said this this morning, sorry, is you had the kind of, this, the, the chart with the, with the, the, balls next to each of the, the things and that I, I think we could cut but you could retain those three larger ones that talk about disruption um, oh uh, I can't remember what all three of them yeah. are uh, um, and and one of those could be you know how many of the educational uh, needs it meets yep and Although one I thing we would need direction on because there was some confusion before is are we measuring the percentage of being able to accomplish that, are we including the high school in that calculation? I, I, I think that's a difficult. I think we have to, well, we should talk about yeah. if there's consensus on what we want to do with the high school, but we can't ignore it. It's a huge cost and we need to, we need to speak to it somehow and I don't know the answer. Yeah. Right yeah. So, so I think what we're hearing is there's a favorability for text in, in this, and it's making sure we get the message right. So I think what we'll do is we'll open a Google Doc tomorrow Perfect. and provide us that feedback if you want certain things eliminated or you want it structured a certain way, and then we can work off of that because I think tonight's effort needs to be on defining the scope, and then we can reflect on how to capture it. Maybe 2 or 3 p.m. deadline, not 10 a.m.? I'm sorry? Maybe a 2 3 p.m. deadline instead of 10 a.m.? Uh, we are struggling to get the ad <laughs> formatted uh, we technically have to the end, we have to tell them what size it is tomorrow, and we have till Monday. Um, and Monday, yeah. Yeah, Lisa, one suggestion on this. I think that it would be a good idea to add this new square footage for all new construction for each of the options. Uh -huh. I think that's like a that. very critical okay. piece of information that every voter will want to have. 
In, in this write-up that we yes. provide, yeah. Right. I would say the write-up and the insert. <clears throat> I wonder if you could have that as an overlay above, oh. above like the baseball, f on, the, on the actual image itself. Maybe you could have a... Yeah, we'll, we'll find a spot for it, but oh. we'll note new square footage. Please, so let's yeah. go with your idea of using the Google Doc to give edits and yep. focus right now on all the other important choices we have yes. to make <clears throat> Absolutely. So in the PowerPoint that you have, um, you have all of this. This will be essentially what we upload into the Google Doc. Um, so please take a minute to, to look it over, um, and we'll go from there. Um, before we get into the heart of what we're going to be determining, everything from this slide down in the presentation is the draft for the forum. So it's draft content for the forum. We'll be replacing things. We'll be adding things. But you'll start to see that it is essentially just like we have shown before, the massings, the dashboard, the text. Um, if there are different things that you want to see, um, let us know. But th this is what we're working towards. And, and too many shifts away from this are going to be very hard to accommodate in the short window of time that we have to produce the stuff for next week. Um, so um, anything that we need to do for clarity or things like that, I'm not going to go through it tonight. It's in the PowerPoint. It's there for you to see. Um, we can even add a section in the Google Doc tomorrow. You can comment on things that you think are working well or not. Um, in, in the slide deck, um, there are I'm just going to skim down really quickly. There are updated long-term planning diagrams just on the feedback that we received last time. Um, there was some need of, of moving some of the bubbles. Um, and then there's another um, updated ones for E3. And I'm going very fast, I know, but I'm just trying to get down to them so you see it. E3 has a revised long-term planning diagram, as, as does E3.1. Um, so I just want to draw your attention to that. We're going to go back. One of the first things, probably one of the easier things, we're going to start with a low-hanging fruit before we get into the really difficult conversations. Um, what do you want to call these? ECE. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion and communications about staying with BCE. Okay. Do we want? Does this committee want to go forward with the communication committee recommendation of concept B, concept C, concept E? And if I could just go around and get, I, or. I yep. voted against it in committee, and we'll vote against it now. I see full support for that. Okay. Tim, if you wanted to you, share. You said. I'm outvoted. Just saying it okay. really clearly. So the majority <laughs> is going forward with this. Okay, we got one thing done. Great. <laughs> Chris, can you hear me? I, I would vote for Woo. BC. You got Tim. Tim go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Yes, I'm sorry. I would go with BC. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Tim. What is your question, Emily? What bubble diagram? Okay. Bubble infographics. This is a forum slide. Um, we have had this dashboard throughout uh, to remind folks where this originated from. It is the prioritized needs um, after all the data collection. Um, and then it would show what percentage, give or take, that option met those prioritized needs. Um, and so I'm just going to use my little pointer here. Um, we would fill the bubbles in, and this graphic was based on elementary, middle, high school scope. So there was a little bit of confusion because of the size of the high school. It does weight these fills down some. Um, and then um, we have the educational goals, energy efficient, and student disruption, which I think is what um, folks were thinking earlier. So we would like feedback on whether we continue forward with this is one question. The second question is, if we continue forward with it, are we illustrating it for the middle school, high, or middle school elementary school, because that's where the, the largest amount of work is occurring, or is it all three schools combined into one? And the third question is, do we stick with these three larger icons? And I'll open it up. Michael. My strong recommendation would be that those line items uh, align with the 12 needs rather you know for example outdoor learning and play is not a specified need and um, it's I, 
and then I think we could address the high school by having that as a separate line. He's talking about the needs that um, are talking about these ads. here, and, you know, if, um, safety and security. We have security improvements, but you know, in that you know, pedestrian. So you're talking about the high school. No, I'm talking about. So the, these are these were the prioritized needs that the committee came up with based on the educational specification, the educational visioning, and the collective conversations we all had. And so I, those, I'm talking about the barriers to education in our schools. If we, they kind of have ended up being modified in the communications committee as as we have developed ways to try to talk about them. So so like for example, the ad in the, that went out in the Courier this past week had these. They were just framed slightly differently, but since we've been framing them that way in public communications, it probably does make sense to align uh, how we present them at the forum to how we presented them in the Cape Courier last this, this past issue. Right. My right. only concern is this is how you guys have made your decisions thus far. Right. Well, yes and no. I mean, not really that different, though. They're just yeah. kind of. We're, we're talking about a matrix, right? I know we're not going to include the matrix that we originally thought in, in, in the advertisements and in the inserts, but you know, we, we identified 12 needs, and those have been, those are, rel I think, relatively easy to understand. You know, security, pedestrian, you know, site circulation, outdated classrooms, um, sprawling layout, oversight. Nurse, nurses, those are specific things that we're trying to address. Not, we, we can't address all of them in, in, in each option, but it, that's how I want to make a decision. I want, that's, what the, that's how I would like for us to be able to communicate it. We're but trying to solve all, for... All of those fold up into these. My only concern is we've, we have structured everything around this. I don't think it's different. The cost estimates, the scope outlines, the way to which we identify renovations. So that, that would be my, my um, concern. But. Can, I, can I ask? Yeah. Um, because this is what has carried through all of our work. Can we, under the summary, get into the 12 or 13 items? So that we've been working on all of these and making decisions around these high level kind of roll up of uh, what the uh, requirements or needs are. What we have in that doc, sorry, what we have in the materials of whether it's 12 or 13 is a little more detail or more detail around them. Why wouldn't that be in the summary? Those well, bullets, it the will, bullets it, address that is what you're saying? It would be, it certainly would be. I just these are more interesting and easier to understand than. It would be really redundant to have the 12 things we've identified in the summary under there because they, they are very similar. So, well, just so we have some structure to this. Yes. And I want to make sure everyone can talk. If you could just put your hand up and I'll try to make sure everyone gets to talk. Cindy. So I think, I, I mean, I agree. We have, this has been in our public forums and all of our public information to date. Mm -hmm. The grid with the needs is fairly new. We just introduced it. I think what needs to happen is mapping these as the solutions to the needs we identified. So we could keep this in here, and I think part of you know, how we're talking about a narrative or however we do it, um, you know, these are things we're doing to address these needs that we're conversing about. I think you know, as we go into the next Add in the next communications, our next phase of communication, that's how we're talking about what our proposed, how our proposed concepts solve for the needs. So I think these are, these are things we're doing to solve the needs we've expressed. So I think they can coexist and we might have to help with the mapping. I mean, if you're, reading about this, you're a member of the public, you're not following every single meeting, which is 95% of the town. You're seeing, okay, option E is going to solve for all of these, and there's just a bit, there's, it's the same number of rows, it's just more specific. What, the way we're, we've been presenting, the barriers to education. More right. Layout modification, what does that mean? I'd rather know that, you know, we're, we're 
fixing sprawl. You know, sprawl is a, is a problem. Outdoor learning and play isn't even, hasn't even been communicated as an actual need. Um, and, I, and I understand what you're, the way that you focus and I think it's all come together well. And that's why we were, that's why you've been able to put together the matrix, although, you know, it's multiple pages, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of information. You are able to look at these 12 needs and you are able to say, option B addresses this and does not address this. Option C addresses these, but not these. E addresses these, but not these. It seems like a, uh, for, for the sake of consistency and I'm going to suggest something. Um, mm -hmm. We're still relatively fresh. Yeah. We're an hour and a half in, hour mm -hmm. and 20 minutes. Of the things we have to decide tonight, right. we have this far is one more. Of them this is one of them. It is, but, yeah. uh, it is, but I, I'm am I making sense? Yeah. wary of us spending yeah. I also think just to, time on this. So let, let me just make a recommendation. So if, if I could just have everyone's attention, all of these things are important. The amount of work that has to happen if we modify these at this hour ahead of the forum is significant. So I would like to make a recommendation, and it's, it's building off of what Cindy said, that we have a slide that maps the needs that came out in that, um, that write-up to these. We keep these tables, but it's easy to map these between now and, and the fourth, there's a lot more things that I feel like we need to stay focused on and making sure we have the scope correct, making sure we have the cost, we have the tax impact, and we have that all laid out because you guys are gonna want material for the forum okay. early next week. For the forum, I would support that, I understand. But I guess we've agreed for the insert with the survey, we will remove these. Although, Caitlin, which, which sections, did you, if you were able to retain two or three, you said you thought were... She's talking about these big guys right here. Oh, those three. Oh, yeah, yeah, those three. Oh, those three. Although, okay. I would, I, I, I have thought from the beginning that educational goals should be modified to be um, how much of the gap we're making up rather than how much of that we're meeting because... How many of the educational they, barriers are we addressing? Yes, from what we have now to what we want to be, because that that ball has been 75% full every time, and I've gotten a lot of people telling me, oh, well, even B is, I, it needs to be a ball that addresses how much of the problem we're solving. You know what I'm saying. Yep. None of them are solving 100%. Right. Okay, so here, here's, here's what we're going to do for the forum. We're going to keep this. We're going to map. We're going to show people yes. how we're transitioning, good, good, good. Ma making the, par the connections of the language. Good, good, it's good. not new, it's just more detailed. Thank you. Um, we'll keep these three icons, we'll call them, in the materials for the ad and the insert, but we remove the matrix from the ad and the yes. insert. Yes, perfect. I, I mean, right. I think that's... Do we gen I just want to make sure we have consensus on that before we move on. Yeah. So the only question I think was still outstanding is, do you count the high school in when you're calculating the icons? So I would like to put that in the parking lot for just a minute, and as we go through the scope, I think it will become clear to us whether we think, depending on how much, how little, what, whatever the case may be, whether we want to, to include that. Corinne? Can I add one more thing? I think for the student disruption bubble, for each option, we should put months or years, just give it a yep. qualifying thing rather than just the graphic. Anyone that hasn't spoken yet want to talk? Patrick. I do want to just keep the boards. We've asked a lot of our architect, especially Emily. I sat next to her every day and I, uh, today, and I think every time we try to change something um, during the communications meeting, I could probably tell that her heartbeat skipped a beat. <laughs> so in the interest of keeping Emily alive so she can finish this, I would, like to keep, I would like to keep this and acknowledge how much she's changed for us when on our whims. I think we need to keep what we've, what, this is what the public's been seeing. I think if we keep it consistent, we can get our message better across instead of trying to blow it up and kind of change it to this point. I think we can tweak it a little bit, but I think that we have to kind of keep 
the format that we have now so it's consistent throughout. It's consistent through our presentations. I think, like I said, I, I give huge kudos to Emily. She has kept up with our crazy little changes that we keep throwing at her. Um, so in the interest of our architectural firm's time, um, and they've put a lot of time on this, we've asked a lot of them. We're gonna be asking even more of them coming up. If we can minimize this amount of work, this part of the work, it's gonna allow them to get, put more time into the form and more time into really screwing down those numbers for us. So that would be my caution to the board about changing too much on this, too much on the ads and everything. So that's all Thanks, I Thanks, Patrick. David, anything you wanna add? Larry, anything you wanna add on this topic? I, I just tend to think we should try to be consistent, work with this format, do the best we can with it. I Thank think you. it was good, just for the record. I think it was really good. And Tim, anything you want to add on this topic? No, I'm good. Thanks. All right, I think we're ready to move. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, we're going to get into the real heart of this. And um, I'm going to go back. What I'd like to focus on is, let's see, our list of takeaways here for just a second. So naming conventions we've addressed. Um, we, the matrix is not being included in the ad. The text for the ad will go in the Google Docs. And we've just talked about determining if the dashboard is to be included in the ad and presentation. So what we need to focus on is um, the scope for modified concept E and the high school scope to be included. And so really some of the best um, slides are kind of the, where we just took a pass, and again, I don't want anybody to think that we're um, trying to influence any kind of direction here. We just wanted to put something on the screen for folks to react to, and I'll pull this one up, for example. Um, you know the options B+, plus, C-, minus, E3, E3.1, and if you have questions, by all means, let's, let's talk through those. But you can see that we have put the base bit up here, there was a request to look at the full cooling, um, in particular electrification, um, to be able to align with the solar projects in town as well as initiatives um, in town, um, identifying those incentives through Efficiency Maine that are uh, currently available. We'll have to continue to track that as those programs go forward. We put in the right sizing of the kindergarten just uh, so that you have that data. Um, and then we put in uh, two line items for the high school. And so I want to just open it up and talk about what folks want to see included for the different options. And we're just going to think about B, C. Let's just talk about B and C right now. I think E needs to be handled by itself because there's a lot to kind of unpack there. All right. Larry, then Caitlin, then Michael. Okay. Thank you, Lisa, for this uh, hard work and presentation. I'll go right to the core of my concerns. I, I have serious concerns and objections to the fact that we have pulled $10 million in vital investment out of the high school with these preliminary numbers. The last report, we had $15 million in repairs and replacement that were provided for in the estimates for B, C and E. That has been cut to five million. So that investment in high school has been reduced by ten million dollars. It's right here. So we just broke it out. So right, you no, I understand it. it. So we got zero to three is the five, yep. and then ten is gonna be three, three six. through six. Yep. So what we're doing is what? We we have no way to pay for this. We cannot obligate the future school board, the superintendent the town council, the voters, to approve these future costs that have to be borne in years three through six. It's our obligation, as we went through this process, we identified the needs for all of our schools, not just the middle school, not just the high school, not just the elementary school. And it is a mistake to pull this out because if in fact we did somehow go and pay for this in years three through six, we're gonna add roughly roughly uh, $3.4 million per year to the 
to the school board's budget. That is, if and Emily, you could help with the numbers. The budget's 36 million, 3.4 increases, nearly 10 percent. So each of those three years, uh, year four, five, and six, we would see a 10 percent increase in the school budget on top of the operating budget, which over the last five years has been averaging 6 percent. That's a 16 percent increase in the school operating budget if we were to cover those, those costs that we pulled out of the original amount that was estimated for all three options. So I just want to state my concerns and objections to removing those. We owe it to the high school to make sure those basic and vital investments are made. We identified code issues. We, invite, we have to make um, investments to secure and make sure the buildings are safe, comfortable, and structurally sound. These are important investments. And to pull $10 million out, I think, is a great mistake. And furthermore, it does more damage to the taxpayer because in those three years where you have to come up with $10 million, you're going to have this huge increase, whereas those funds could be, be paid for with a 20-year bond instead of trying to pay for those $10 million in expenses over three years. To me, that's a terrible mistake, and I think it it basically abandons our commitment. Remember, the repair option was $34 million, and that was option A. We all assumed that that was the baseline for the three schools. So what are we doing? We're walking away from that commitment for the high school because we, we want to reduce the cost of one of the E options, for example. For example, I, I tend to favor B+. Plus. I'm waiting for some final information, but I want to see that put back into B+, plus because I don't think that's an expense that we can walk away from. We're, and just to be clear, we're not structuring options here. We're giving you guys data so you can I, I understand, them. Lisa. I, I'm just making a point. This is how it works out. You, you, the only way you can come up with this $10 million is to fund it in the future, and it has to be funded mm -hmm. in years four, five, and six. Based on your own analysis, you're only covering zero through three. Just in, in that breakdown, yes, and here are the items. So we're giving you the data. You guys have that tough decision to make. Yes. You have the tough decision to figure out what repair items uh, go into the high school, what other items do or do not go in the high school, what happens at these other schools in regards to any of these alternates. Right. So here's the data. This is, and this is high level. I mean, the spreadsheet, it's people know is, is very detailed, but we picked out the big things so you can see them. Zero to three, this is what would be happening at the high school for repairs, and three to six, it's a, it's a lot of the mechanical. A right. lot of the mechanical needs to be addressed. I, I, I understand it. I, I, I understand. You're, you're neutral here. You've given us the numbers. I have no objections to them, Lisa. What I'm pointing out is that we are pulling out $10 million out of the original option A, which was repair and replacement. These are vital investments. These relate to be able to sustain the safety and health and comfort of our students and of our faculty. We should not do this. This money should be restored to all three options, in my opinion, because if we don't, we're not living up to our own commitment to have established the priority needs. And at the very top, at the pinnacle of our list, is what? It's repairs and replacement. It was originally 34.5 million, I believe, was the original number that you identified. And, and these are necessary. And to put these off, we cannot obligate a future school board. We cannot obligate our superintendent to put these millions of dollars in that school budget and then expect it to be approved by the voters. It, we have no authority to do that. If we're going to do our job, we need to do it now. Thank you, Larry. Kaylin, Michael, and then I saw Cindy's hand. Caitlin. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Larry just summed up the entire problem with the schools for the last 30 years. This is why we're in the situation that we're in. Uh, because people made a decision not to make long, like, significant investments in the schools structured over bonds over the last 20 years. So now we're in a situation where we have to make really difficult decisions about which school is in the most dire straits at any given moment in time. Because as you have reminded us many, many, many times, the taxpayers will only accept a certain level of tax increase. So we are between a rock and a hard place. I feel like what I want to say is going to be very disruptive, which is that when you look at the difference between C plus and E1, 
you have a $10 million difference, but a dramatically different return on investment to the town. And then I feel like you guys have, thankfully, this isn't a criticism at all, this is something I'm happy to see, but also feel like puts us in an agonizing, rock and a hard place situation, where you have essentially come up with a, a G1 that costs the same as the last referendum. And, and to your point, if we know we can solve all the problems and we know we can't kick the can down the road, like, uh, it's like, what do we do here? Because there is no solution that doesn't do what you're afraid of. Every single solution leaves some part of the school unaddressed from critical needs. I, it's, it's, it's an, we're in an impossible situation. In my opinion, we should be, we should be putting, if we actually have a G1 that costs $114,000 million, that was a terrible way of saying a number, but you know what, it's really a 115 for, a, for what was essentially a G, we should be putting B plus E1 and E3 on the, that, those should be our three options. We, oh, I'm sorry, I, I've no, um, this is, I'm not upset at the numbers, the numbers are what the numbers are, but at the same time, I feel like I don't, I don't, what do we do? Right, so we're gonna continue to go, and remember, we've got a lot of, a lot of members and they all wanna say something, so Michael. So, I appreciate Larry's comments and I have a suggestion that might save us some time tonight if, if, if there was widespread agreement, but it would be my strong recommendation that whatever investment amount we commit to the high school, we agree to commit across all three options. We don't say, let's take something out of option C or option E, but we, we agree on what actually is critical. And I was working under the assumption that uh, option A was, you know, the critical or, or, or vital needs, and so I would, you know, I, I appreciate Larry uh, making that point uh, the way he, that, that he did, but it would be my recommendation that whatever we settle on, we settle on one set of um, repairs and renovations for the high school across all three options. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that, um, and, and similar to what Caitlin said, I'm concerned that if we were to, um, you know, only address those in the high school, or, or you know, and minimally address, say, middle school repairs. We're still setting ourselves up to have to make that size of investment. It would just be in the middle school in three to six year time frame, versus if we're, um, you know, if we can address one thing as completely as possible and address repairs potentially in other buildings, then we at least have started to chip away at a long-term solution for all three buildings. Because I feel like if we do a little bit at each building, we haven't solved anything long-term. So if we can get to where we've got a middle school, we've got a long-term solution to the middle school. We don't have to look at doing anything to the middle school then in, in that three to six or six to 10 year time frame. And we start to chip away at the other ones. I think we're in, we're in a better spot um, because my concern would be if we you know, kind of do a little bit with each, we're, we're setting ourselves up to have a big problem again in less than 10 years. Thanks, Cindy. Those that haven't had a chance to talk, Corinne? Um, I think that what we should do is kind of summarize what the main goal is for each option. For example, I think B is the minimum repairs plus safety and cafeteria pretty easily. Um, C plus is pretty much as much as we can do with you know, addressing the minimums plus larger building additions, right, addressing more at the high school. I think, as Cindy is saying, E is really focusing on setting up the campus, this whole school campus for a long-term plan. And so I actually was thinking the opposite of what you were thinking, Michael. But I think in the E's, we should focus on one school and then add a la carte as much as we think can pass 
in the elementary school or the high school um, and really make that the goal of the ease is to get one school replaced and set the school up for a good solid future of addressing one building at a time. David? Um, I just agree, I agree with Larry and Michael. I mean, to take the high school out is just wrong. To, to come back later and tell our taxpayers, oh, by the way, your tax is going up because we took the high school out. I think we're blindsiding the community by doing that. And we need to put the high school in there. It, we owe it to those kids just as much as we do the middle school. That's my feeling on it. Thanks, David. Patrick? Um, so, Cape Elizabeth has a long history of kicking the can down the, down the road when it comes to our buildings. Uh, we have not done a good job um, for probably the last 50 years, really, on how to maintain these buildings. Um, I was even told uh, the high school that we know it now, when they moved from what was the middle school to the high school, this is from former chief, fire chief Peter Gleason, um, they didn't have enough money to move the furniture. They had the kids do it. Um, so that just shows the lack of planning that Cape Elizabeth has done in the past. I, per, I look at it as a little bit different. I would like to see us build a new middle school to have something that we can say, this is done, it's finished. And I feel like the high school is the low-hanging fruit here. And if we could get that good, for another 10 years, we can really put a lot of CIP money in to the elementary school and make it um, a really decent place to be in short time. So I think if we, if we build a new school, let's fix our biggest problem, which is obviously the middle school, we've identified that, I think everyone agrees that. And then we take the next one, which is the high school, and just fix it. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, it's, I mean, if. You know, we all had a billion dollars. I'm sure we'd all love to rebuild all three schools, but we don't. So that, that would be, I, I agree with Larry, leaving the high school, I don't think it's a great idea. Um, I would like to see the middle school taken care of. I'd like to see just a little bit of touch up on the elementary school. Um, you know, I have, I have some things I think we could probably even take out of the elementary school scope. But I think if we do that and we fix the high school, I think we're gonna be a lot better um, moving forward uh, as far as our, our buildings are concerned, especially for the schools. I think that's gonna be the best way. I think it's gonna be financially feasible. And I think it's financially responsible um, if we do it that way. That's my opinion. Thank you. Tim, anything you wanna add at this point? And then the microphone is enabled. Yep. Is it Tim there? Yep, he's here. Just uh, ask him, Tim, if you want to unmute your, should be live anytime, sir. All right, we'll come back to him. Penny? Um, I will uh, support Larry's position to bring um, the high school back in across the board. Um, I will look forward to he seeing the results of the survey to see what direction we take from there. So when you say bringing the high school back in, are you talking the six-year uh, six repairs? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And can I Cindy. just want to clarify, I was not saying leave the high school out. I was, I, I would tend to agree that we need to consider the repairs that the high school needs. I just, I wouldn't want to do that at the demise of something else. I think, as, as Penny said, bring it in across the board with what we're doing now. But, um, you know, we, we need to figure out a way. We're in a, we're in a difficult spot. I do agree that we, we don't want to completely leave the high school out of this. Corinne. Um, I was at the elementary school last week for conferences and I saw that they installed sort of a temporary security feature and enclosed locked vestibule that's electrified and you know, it's essentially a typical security feature that, you know, double entry of vestibule, everything we've been talking about. My question is, it's, I, I was interested to hear what Patrick said, you know, replace the middle school and the high school being the second easy option to just get up 
to a certain level. Um, does that new vestibule at the elementary school, does that do us well enough for however many years, 10 years or so, that we could, to a certain extent, take more of the elementary school off the table? I'll answer that one. Um, I think having a, a main office out front of our, any of our schools is a key safety feature. And that vestibule was just to get us through to the referendum. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I got Michael, then David, um, and then we'll go back to Larry. I have a question for the, for the broader committee, or at least something to consider, because I've heard of really, I guess for the first time, um, options B and C referred to as kicking the can down the road. And I want to know if that's how we're going to be talking about it as a committee. Um, in presenting, you know, when we present those options. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a, I think it's a strange characterization. It's, it's, uh, these are significant investments, particularly if you include the high school uh, investments that, um, you know, the, the three to six year, three to six years out. It's, it's significant improvements, uh, regardless of, of, of options. So, anyway, it's just, it's a little annoying, <laughs> I gotta say, to hear them referred to as kicking the can down the road. So. David, um, just from the previous survey, it was pretty clear from the residents of the Cape Elizabeth they could not go with the 100 million, 130 million, and stuff like that. So now we're talking about going back out to referendum again with possibly 114 million, 130 million. What did we bring to the table if we didn't? If we if we kept the price the same or kept it higher. And I agree on kicking the can. That's a poor way of putting it. And I don't like it and I find it offensive. So we're doing the best we can. And, but I'm saying from the last survey, the people, the majority of the people said we can't afford it. There's people out there that are living from paycheck to paycheck. And we got these grandos ideas on a lot of this stuff. They can't afford it. And that's why they got us here right now to help out to get the price down. I just want so, to say this has alternates in it, so I just want yep. to be clear that this isn't the base bid. Right, is not but that what I'm saying, to go back now, after we spent a year here, to go back and say, well, we did our job now, the school's 114 million, 130 million, we're gonna look foolish. Mm. We didn't do our job, to me. Yeah. We're not done yet. No, we're not but done. I'm just saying, right, mm -hmm. my opinion. We aren't done yeah. yet. Larry, then we'll go. I don't know who it is. Yeah, thank you. I'll um, go Larry, then I'll go Cindy, then I'll come back that way. One, one thing I want to point out, with all of these options, we will almost certainly be rolling over the bonds at 10 years. We will have a provision in them to do that. Yeah. In the meantime, we will pay off tens of millions of dollars on these bonds. Those, those funds could be then provide headroom to roll over bonds and add that money back in for the schools. And so this is not a zero sum game here. As we go forward, our future school board and our community will have that as an option to continue invest in our schools. We make a basic investment, fix the issues that need to be fixed. We will have the opportunity to use those funds to construct new sections of the school and build it over time or tear down large portions the future has a lot of opportunity in it, and we have to recognize that as part of this decision here. And again, I go back to the idea that, look, there's nothing more basic than option A. We went through that process. It was number one. It's at the pinnacle of our priority list. We need to put this money back in and get that work done for zero through six years. It'll be the best for the taxpayers because it won't put that huge burden on them during years four, five, and six, which could be around $3.4 million a year, nearly 10% added on to the school budget. Even if you could get it approved, which would probably be impossible. It, 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 it would just be far too heavy a burden. So to make those kinds of assumptions is just a misguided uh, concept on this part. It's, it, it's bordering on on just disregarding the realities. And I just want to make this point that David said, look, the voters spoke a year and a half ago. They told us in, in uncertain terms that 
with a 62% uh, percent defeat of that bond at $116 million, it's just too much money, it was too large, and it was going to raise taxes too much. If Warren Buffett came here and offered to pay for all new schools here, we'd love it and we'd want to do it. We all want to do it. We'd like that. But that's not our reality. Our reality is we have to come up with a cost-effective proposal that's going to address as many of the concerns and many of the needs as we can at a price and at a cost point that the taxpayers are willing to approve. And as far as I'm concerned, we have to do our best to focus on that and come up with a proposal that's viable and that can pass. Because if we fail, it's just going to mean more of the same going forward for our kids and our educators. So I heard this conversation now for a while, um, and I heard some support for putting six-year repair back in whatever solution we select. And I heard all, most of you support that concept. Is that? Can I ask yeah. a clarifying question? Sure. Um, I, Larry, I think I, I think I understand where you're going, and. Um, and tell me if I'm, I'm wrong. The implementation of the solution can be managed and the expenditures managed over a period of time? Or are you talking about sequencing project or what? No, I'm just stating that, that, that we will be paying down the bonds yeah. and there will be X amount of dollars depending on the size of the bond that we've paid off at the end of 10 years. Right. That okay. means that the future school board and council could roll yeah. that okay. bond over and have money available. Yep. I'm not saying what it should do with that money. I'm just making the point yep. that it would be available if we rolled the bonds over. OK. And, Perfect. Thank you, Larry. Hmm? Michael. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to go back this direction. <laughs> we'll go right down the line. I just think it put is. Me in the list somewhere. I just can't seem to my hand somehow. Tim, you're off mute. Yep. Yeah. He he just wants to be included on the next. All right. I'll come back to him once after. Does. I mean, yeah. I have no problems including in, including the high school. I I feel like. I, I feel like. Uh, when you look at B and C and you say that there's going to be significant investments, but we know for a fact, I've asked, clarified, much of the school will look essentially completely untouched in those options. We will still have a sprawling middle school. We will still have so many problems in those schools. We will spend tens of millions of dollars for the students to have, and I'm not saying that fixing the cafeteria isn't a big improvement. It is a big improvement. There are things here that will be improved, but the reality is, is that the schools will remain significantly the same, and we will count on a future school board or town council doing something different than the last many town councils who have just let bonds roll off to, to maintain our low tax rate. Why would we have faith that that will not happen again? Because that is all that has happened up to this point. We are now at carrying zero debt because we don't do that in CAPE. There's, and so I, I, I just have no faith that that's gonna happen and I have to say, I don't understand why we have been so unwilling to, to put as much verve and effort into doing things like we've had multiple people from the public say we should start saving in advance now to try to mitigate the tax impact. We've had, mul we've had people from the public say that we could offer tax incentives to, to senior citizens on fixed incomes, and I don't think that we have heard any evidence that that has been pursued. Oh, I oh, don't As, even go there. Okay, okay. Do then, not even go then, there. I guess not presented here in these meetings as like, uh, as a, uh, I'm not. Caitlin, can I pause for a second? This is heated and emotional and we're all trying to find a solution, but remember our aim tonight was not to pick one. Right. It but wasn't like to put one above another. It was to give Lisa and Emily and Chuck some guidance on what's going out forward. So whether you support E, B, or C, maybe even irrelevant this evening, we're just trying to give feedback mm -hmm. so we get something out next week. So let's all just breathe a little bit. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Caitlin, I'll let you finish, and then I'll go down to Corinne, and then to Tim. Tim. Like a little, I, I just... 
this is, I don't even know how to give you the feedback that you want because I kind of feel like, <laughs> this feels like we've already failed because it feels like we have no way to make up the gap in money to do what seems like the right thing to do. So, so I, 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 I would also like, sorry, one last thing. Before we keep talking about how they rejected soundly the last bond, the last bond was rejected soundly due to a large misinformation campaign that told, promised the public something that was not true. We do not know necessarily how they would react to a public information campaign that told the truth. Lisa, you were going to clarify something, and yeah, then I Corinne, just, and then Tim, and then Penny. Absolutely. Um, I just want everybody to know I'm listening to all of this because I'm, I'm hearing threads of what the direction is. Um, and you need to all remember you've done a lot of work and you've spent a lot of time going into all of this. You're not picking one option. We are fine tuning B, plus, we are fine tuning C, minus, and then we are determining what would be in option E. Um, so if it's price driven, then we need to back things out. If it's we need to include certain items at different schools, then we need to add them in. But I'm taking note of all that. I want to continue to hear everyone's perspective, but just keep that in mind and just reiterating what Chris said. We're, he we're here just to fine tune these, and there's a lot of value in all of these options. Um, so just, um, I think we're on to Tim at this point, right? Uh, Corinne, did you want to say anything? Oh, sorry. Um, my response was going to be to Michael's question about the kicking the can statement. Um, and I don't think that's a nice way to talk about any of these options, but um, B and C are continuing the same strategy that our campus has used over time, which is small additions and renovations. And C is shifting that strategy, or sorry, E is shifting that and trying a new strategy. I think that's the difference. Thank you. Tim, and then we'll head over to Penny and Cindy. Hi, Tim. Yeah, uh, first of all, first of all, I, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to strongly support uh, if, if we're going to consider E, uh, an E3-1, uh, I think it's got to stand on its own. It's got to it's got to be able to to get approval without stripping out the essential things we have to do not only at the high school but at the elementary school as well. We've got to we've got to at least those cans could not be kicked down the road anymore. Those are safety issues. I mean, windows. We now know we can do complete window renovations on both the middle school and the elementary school for a million dollars. We probably ought to do that anyway, regardless of what happens with the elementary school. Replace those for half a million dollars. Those are those are comfort things, as Larry points out, to students and faculty. Those would help them to be more comfortable in their classroom. So E has to stand on its own. It can't. We can't skinny down everything else to make E something that could be financially palatable. And I, I, for maybe I missed something along the way, but I didn't understand how we even got to an E three one which Caitlin uh, pretty clearly identified is really a G something. Uh, I mean, how does that even get back on the board? Was, was that something that somebody suggested? Was that something that, the, that Lisa came up with on her own? But E31 was a bit of a surprise for me tonight. But, uh, uh, you know, when, when you come, the, the town has been very supportive of whatever the town the council or the school board, for, we've really only given this town in the, since 2017, we've been working on this. We went to the town with one vote. Last November was the first time we've asked the town to support something like this. So it's not like we've given them multiple, multiple options that they've continually declined. You know, the, this is, last November was the first time we went to them and they declined what we presented. So I, I think to, to uh, you know, kind of denigrate the town for what they haven't done, we haven't really given them much to vote on that's, uh, that's reasonable. We've given them one opportunity, one option, and they, they declined that. But, uh, you know, when we went through the tour at Wentworth, 
they told us that I think it was either I think Chris was with us. I think they went through five or six of these kinds of uh, referendums before they were finally got Wentworth approved. So the town of Cape Elizabeth taxpayers I'm talking about have been very supportive of the schools and what their needs are. So I think we ought to quit uh, talking about what they've been doing when we need to do our job. So I just want to clarify where E3.1 came from. Um, last meeting, we were looking at the phasing, or not phasing, I should say, long-term planning of um, option E. And at that point, we had shown a way to simplify the um, and correct the fire separation within the elementary school going forward. And essentially, that, that's where E3.1 came out of, that if you replace those older sections, you could address and provide um, a current code uh, fire separation between um, sections of the building. And it was just something that uh, we talked about studying and seeing if it had any merit. Um, so that, that's where it was born out of. Thank you, Cindy and Penny. Okay. I have a few little notes. Um, I think, first of all, this committee has worked super hard. And to David's question, you know, why have we even been here? We have done a lot of work to deeply understand the needs and show the community the value of their investment. And there has been a lot of work done. And I know I was on the prior project. There has been a lot of work done that was not either done or well communicated the last time. So the level that we've all been involved, the level that we deeply understand the needs and understand what needs to be solved is so much higher than the prior project. And I think we're already doing a much better job communicating that to the public. And I think when they make their decision, they're gonna be making a decision understanding the value of their investment. I think Larry and uh, you know, the finance team has done a very good job understanding the long-term financial impact, not just you know, framing it as a single large tax impact and a big scary number. I think, you know, just to your point, Larry, talking about spreading this out over 20, 30 years, what it's gonna look like for the taxpayer, how to take advantage of, of you know, refinancing bonds, rolling it off. We did not have that analysis the first time. That's another bit of information the public's going to have. And I think, you know, we're gonna, we'll know, we're doing a survey. We'll know from the results of the survey what the, the temperature of the community is. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to comment on is, you know, the, re the comment around kicking the can. Um, I agree with Corinne, it's been, it, there has been a strategy to do inexpensive, shorter term fixes in favor of solving a root cause problem for the long term. And I did a lot of research back on the 1993 renovation of Pond Cove in the middle school. Rebuilding at that time was presented as an option. They didn't choose it because of the expense of it. And they did an extensive renovation hoping to get another 20 years. That was 1993. So I feel like a big renovation like that is just repeating what they did 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago now. Um, and in and, and verbiage, words like grandiose are just as damaging as kick the can. I think our last project got framed as a Taj Mahal. I don't see anything in the new middle school design that's grandiose. I'm not seeing gold-plated toilets. Um, I'm seeing, you know, an auditorium as maybe a possible future option. Um, I think we've taken you know, things that maybe, like the gym we talked about last time, the stage we talked about last time, those are truly linked to our educational programming needs where they may exceed the size of a typical middle school, but so does our band program. So does the use of our, our gym spaces. So I think words like grandiose are just as harmful as words like kick the can when we're talking about renovation. I think we have to frame these as viable alternatives to solve needs of our schools and we need to know, the community needs to know the value they'll get for their money long term with each solution and they need to know what needs are met by each proposed concept. Thank you, Cindy. Penny? 
right, I'm all set. You all set? Yeah. Michael Hermes. Michael and Larry. Just want to remind everyone that I am personally agnostic to the three options, and I will support any of these three that we feel can, can be successful. I approached this and supported including all of these in our final three because I felt like they had a chance. And it's, you know, we have a lot, we have things to focus on tonight so that we can move forward and, and, and finalize the public forum and finalize uh, the survey and the information we're going to be sharing with every household in, in, in town. And none of them are perfect. Nothing's perfect in life. But we are doing the best we can. And I would be proud if we're successful in passing any, in, in, in getting any of these three options uh, over the board, I'd be extremely disappointed, extremely disappointed if we failed. And I'll just leave it at that. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. I think we've had a pretty robust discussion of this, and I really think we ought to move the, this issue forward. And uh, I'd like to suggest we just take a consensus vote here, not necessarily a formal motion, to restore the full high school repair to each of the three options. That would be roughly 15 million for B, 15 million for C, 14 million for E. Costa, right? Can, I've already can, added them in. Right. Can I add a bit more context to that? I'm so sorry. But these aren't the final plans, right? We have a survey going out. We can make adjustments. You know, my biggest fear was that we'll get no support for any of these. I hope that's not the case. Um, but I think it's the right thing to do to include the high school options in, 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 in each of these three. And again, we can, these aren't final. This is where we are today. But I just want to clarify, when we say options, we're not talking about options, we're talking about repair, adding back in repair three through six years? Three to six is okay. what I meant. I just yes. want to make sure I understand. So I have, just uh, while you guys are talking, I was adding this back in. This is, for example, the chart we put together earlier without full cooling. And if you were to add back in the repair three to six years for the high school, what these options would, the total value would be. Granted, we are carrying in this chart, and you guys can tell us whether to take it out or, um, or not, uh, an alternate for right sizing the kindergarten uh, wing through renovation and an addition in B plus. We are not showing that in E3. Um, and as Michael said, you have going forward the ability to adjust any of these plans and scope uh, within either, you know, the elementary, middle school scope with any one of these um, if you want to fine tune uh, the numbers and scope. Um, but the data is there. Um, but I just want to make sure you guys have that data point as you talk about this. So including three through six year repairs at the high school back in in any plan. I think Larry's brought that up. We've discussed it thoroughly. Just going down the line, do we have consensus or support at this point, um, knowing things are gonna change after the survey, after the forum, and as we move forward? So Michael, are you, do you support that? Corinne? Caitlin? No. Yep. Yes. And Tim. Tim? Just, just for clarification. Yes, I, I, just for clarification. I, guess I wouldn't support Larry's point. Okay, thank you. Go oh, ahead, thanks. Larry. I just, so just simply what, I've, what, what we've agreed to is we're just adding $10 million to the subtotals for each of those at the top. 10.8. 10, 10. And then we're going to deal with other issues, renovation issues and so forth, heating and cooling and so forth. Correct. Right. And so we're just talking about repairs three to six. Right. I have, I have two questions related to that process. One is, I had asked for an estimate to replace the athletic field that would be lost with option E at the it's last. It's included in the option that, E that total. That is included in the number? It is included and in the roughly number. Roughly, what is the amount? Uh, sorry, I don't have that on the top of my head, but I can get that for you. Okay, and then further, I'm confused about the, he the heating and cooling option. That apparently is for all three schools? No. It's $16 million covers what? So this alternate, sorry, is it here? Full, uh, the top part is just the, it's just the elementary middle school. So that would be full cooling with backup heat. 
Um, that means if, uh, and okay. so that is that VRF system, full cooling for the elementary middle school scope for B plus, C minus, E3, E3.1. Okay, and under the current efficiency main rebates, it would yep. cover about half of that amount, or is, the, is that? It the shows amount? you right there what the efficiency main incentives oh, I are. See the, uh, yeah, okay, so that's all they're paying out of that portion? Correct. Okay. So I have it above for the efficiency main what is in the base scope because mm -hmm. there is some cooling in some areas, and then for the full building cooling, what they would carry um, uh, for that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just a quick question. Yeah. On, you said that these numbers are rough order of magnitude. Do you see anything that would really bust, have a bust on? I mean, we're, we're at early concept, so we have you know, our contingencies, we have you know, escalation, all of that. Nothing um, that jumps out right okay. now. I know we've looked at the site. I know we've looked at, you know, abatement, demo, all those things. There are unknowns, but, but we, have, we have our contingencies carried. Um, so I, nothing comes to mind. Okay. The other one you mentioned about soft cost, does that include the furniture and everything yes. too? Okay. Yeah, it can, I want to clarify, it carries a percentage of the total construction cost for furniture. So it, it, I can't tell you it covers every last bit of the entire school, but we carry 4% of the construction costs for furniture, um, and that's what's carried here, and then 2% for uh, technology. Okay. Corinne and then Cindy. Um, I'm looking at the summary of zero to three and three to six year slide. Um, not for our next version, but you know, once we get past this next step, I think it'd be helpful to see this broken out um, and see which elements need permit, permitting an architect, engineers, mm -hmm. you know, high complex contractor versus just anybody. Um, because I see a lot of them like clean existing ductwork that, you know, there's things in here that I think we don't necessarily need the big giant team to do that we could kind of chip away at this. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to remind folks that if you include it in the project, it will go to the general contractor that's part of that project, and it would be an efficient way to address those, but other things that aren't included, by, for sure. Yeah, if, I could, if I could just add one thing, that's a great example. Um, David and I have looked at, David Babagazari and I have looked at these items, and he shared with me all the subcontractor quotes he's been getting over the last two years more to help build the CIP as we move forward. There are things in there that he's either already done or has indicated they don't need to be done. They wouldn't know that yet. We're, we're going through that, but I can tell you when we get to the final points as you get through this, we're gonna be able to weed those things out. But you have to remember, like what Lisa said, these are concept estimates at this point. So we can't get into the weeds on how much of that is really there. It gives you an idea of what you're headed to. We will refine that when we do that final estimate and that's what David and I are going through right now. Cindy, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, I saw the note in the slide. You could do full cooling just at the new middle school, 423. Mm -hmm. What would that difference look like? And does that um, efficiency mean? Yeah, I, I need to pull that. I mean, in general, it's going to be half that number um, if we were just to use a ballpark. Um, so, you know, we'd take probably five or six million out of that full cooling with backup heat. Um, that's a ballpark. I can get the exact out of the estimate, but just based on um, uh, magnitude of scale of the, of the buildings, that's about what it would be. Yep. So Lisa, can you yeah. guide us a little bit? What else do you need yeah. us to so, decide? Absolutely. Um, I, I will just say I did, while you guys were discussing this, add in you know, the dollar amounts uh, for both of these to add in the, the um, repairs three to six. So with full cooling, you know, if you were to go that route with the 10 year, with the three to six repairs, this could be what the bottom line is with those different alternates. So I want you to have that data point. I think what we've heard is the three to six year repair, not I think, we have heard that is carried in these options um, based on the majority. Um, so I want to now focus on E. E3, E3.1. From what I've heard, and you guys let me know if I have misheard this, E3.1 is not the direction that I'm hearing the group headed. It is more of the E3 focusing on the middle school and 
I even heard some folks say there could even be some adjustments to what is shown in the elementary school right now um, to, to minimize that scope. Um, but am I correct um, in that E3 is the focus for option E um, and not 3.1? So and remind us, E3.1 was removing the grade four wing. So this is 3.1. We've removed, um, let me get my pointer so it's easier. Yeah. We've, we've removed the third and fourth grade wing right here and rebuilt it as a two-story and new entrance. So essentially you've replaced all of this. Um, you've, you've helped uh, reduce uh, some of the sprawl since you've reduced the distance by the fourth grade wing of the building um, and you've set yourself up to um, in phases replace this area and simplify the firewalls that is e3.1 e3 is um, uh, some minor um, renovations throughout the school um, uh, looking at some safety and security items and um, wayfinding and then we have this addition uh, for a new admin um, and uh, we have world language and STEM um, in this edition here. This is the elementary, or sorry, this is the uh, library that's renovated, and then this is a smaller edition over here. That is the major difference between E3 and E3.1. Cindy. Do you have an estimated lifespan? Like, would the E3. Dot Cindy, can you pull your mic? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you have the estimated lifespan for each option? So would E3.1 give us 20 more years with the school versus 10 with E3? Well, in, like in some that? ways, in E3.1, you are resetting the clock for almost 50% of the school. Okay. So in E3, you, you are not even doing a, a major renovation to really have the impact like the 93 edition or renovation had. Um, to where they were trying to get 20 more years with that major renovation. Um, you are addressing needs, um, but you're not kind of resetting the clock in certain areas, if you will. Okay, thank so. you. Lisa, does E, I don't go down here, does this option repair Pond Cove, like the six years of repair? Yeah, so this does repair um, in the elementary school for zero to three, three to six. Um, and as we just heard tonight at the high school, it would need yep. to do zero to three, three to six in regards to repair. All right, any other clarifying questions about this? And then we'll see. And, and both E's replace the middle school. I, I thought that was obvious, yeah. but I wanna make sure folks understood that. Corinne, then Caitlin, um, then Larry. If I remember one. from our phasing conversation last meeting, kind of the beauty of E.3 is that you can move the elementary school into the middle school and then do all the work. So for the whole thing, no students are disrupted. That's the benefit. There's less right? student disruption. So I'm getting to those phasing and we're not spending, you know, right now we've budgeted 3.8 million for that, those relocations in B and C. Um, yeah. And that money is going into the buildings on uh, the E options. So I guess my thought is, you know, I, I don't think that we have a chance of getting E3 point whatever it is, the more advanced one passed. But I do have a question if we want to set ourselves up for a similar option down the road, do we want to consider not demoing the whole middle school right away? Is there any value to that at all? Cost of maintaining and running that facility? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, that's part of it. Um, we will already be separating the systems. Um, it's yeah. probably not, doesn't make sense. It's, it, you're, it's yeah. tricky. You're not gonna wanna invest money into keeping it up and running, not knowing how long you'd maintain that. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So the comment was you're running an inefficient building. It's okay. I'll amplify for you. Thanks, Corinne, Kate, yeah, and thanks. Larry. I guess just conceptually, uh, the difference between E3 and E3.1 being about $15 million, I guess in my head, I'm attributing that primarily to that um, rebuild of Pond Cove. Uh, 
and, and it seems that that kind of fixes Pond Cove for a very long time. Uh, and so I guess, um, is it is there any way, if we were to serious, if we were to consider moving forward with B plus or C minus, that we could take what those do to Pond Cove and instead do this to Pond Cove? I think that's something you may want to consider as you go from three to one um, and uh, see what feedback you get from, from the community um, could be a consideration. I don't think you're going to want to, nor do we have the time to adjust B and C to consider that, um, but it's definitely sure. something we can look at. The challenge is where right now in the design, the cafeteria kitchen addition connects um, so we'd have to think about that differently, um, but it's not a we can't. It would have to be thought of differently and approached differently. Thank you, Larry. Uh, I'm sorry, just to switch back to the actual cost for full heating and cooling, but again, we're talking $16 million, is that correct? Let me get back there. Before, before the subsidy. Um, if we add 36,000 square feet on option B, that'll bring us up to a total of about 200,000 square feet of building the heat and cool. Just a back of the envelope cost estimate, that's $80 a square foot for a VRF heat, heating and cooling system. And I just want to be sure, Lisa, is it really $80 a square foot? I, I'm baffled because there's, there's zero payback at the cost here of this system. Um, I'm just I'm just baffled as to where this money this cost comes from. It it comes from our season cost estimator that has just priced a recent school with a VRF system. So it's based on historic numbers that have been um, realized in this competitive market. Um, there is. Uh, detail in the estimate as to all of this that our mechanical um, engineer has reviewed. I know that Chuck and his team have looked at it. Um, so it's, it's the number to do full cooling with the backup heat for the elementary and the middle school. We can, I think that's an important question, but can we settle the E conversation first and then go into heating and cooling? Mm -hmm. Is sure. that possible? just so we can try to knock one thing off at yeah, a time. And I just, I wanted to fo keep following the thread. I think Corinne was going down the, the phasing. So that that is um, one of the reasons uh, E, I've heard, and correct me if I've misheard, has stayed in the mix is because it will reset your clock for your middle school and set you up in the future to be able to do um, concentrated scope at the elementary um, school in, in the future for E3. E3.1 um, uh, does a lot of that resetting now. Um, and this would be essentially the phasing. You can see it replaces everything in pink. Um, and then in the future, if uh, you decide that you need to replace these areas, we've already created that firewall separation that makes it easy to come in and address these other wings in the future or even the gym and cafeteria. Um, so just wanted to follow that thread all the way through. Well, we are, I heard at least some con parts aspects of E3.1 we may be able to repurpose, but is there anyone that wants to um, support E3.1 staying in or can we stick with E? Best way to expedite this conversation, Patrick. I think right now I don't think financially we can get point one through. Yeah. So I'm just I will, if anyone... I will compliment the architect. That is a great way to fix a lot of problems in one big fail swoop. So kudos to your team and whoever came up with that concept because um, it does fix a lot of the problems. And like I said, if we had an unlimited amount, that'd be a good, a really good way to go for this concept. But I think right now. We need to kind of get us down to the actual three. Thanks, Patrick. Anyone or good with E, not E? Cindy, anything you want to add? No, I'm I'm good with E, but I, I do I just wanted to express my reasoning for that, and I I like um, what you've proposed with 3.1. Like Patrick said, I I, I also think it um, I, I think it would be difficult to pass this year, and I also think it does set us up well 
with our long-term plan. So, you know, it's, it's good to know that's coming up and if we have an opportunity for additional investment down the line, we, we have that. Um, so I'm good with E3. Okay. Anyone else wanna speak on that topic? Okay. So I've heard that we are eliminating E3.1 and we can revisit aspects of it in the future reduction from three to one, but 3.1 is removed. E3, so we have B plus, C minus, E3 with the high school zero to six year repair. Um, so I'm just gonna update as we go. And then I think we're shifting to the heating question. Perfect. Or cooling question, whether to include or not. Did you wanna comment on that? I know Chuck had something to say about that. Sorry to delay you, Chuck. On that. No, 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 I, I'm glad you did. Larry, I just wanted to approach. Remember one thing, though, as when you're when you're changing this, the VR to a VVRF, you're doing this in a renovation environment, and that ups the costs. So that's the that's where you'll see if you were to look at the newer buildings, in the and and if you went to an alternative heating system and cool, cool, cooling system in the newer buildings, the costs would be less because it's brand new. Well, I mean, these factor in some, some of the renovation costs. Right. Well, to that point, uh, Lisa brought in the engineers from Harriman to a meeting with the Finance Committee, and we were advised that new VRF systems in new buildings were $18 a square foot. So we're looking at $80 a square foot for a retrofit. I, I, as I said, I'm puzzled. I'm very surprised by that. If you, <laughs> if you run numbers on it, it clearly w won't pay. It's, it, it's just not even... Not even we had our own. estimators. We had our estimators look at it at the same time, and they met yet yesterday and reviewed the numbers. And neither one of them felt that they were out of line. But we'll ask them to look at it again okay. for sure. It's no problem. And what we'll do is we'll do some re re research to find out what they've gone for and other projects, not only in the area but as we go further south too. Well, based on the analysis I've done with Richard Parker, member of the Energy Committee, the, this cost would would be far in excess of what we thought would be a reasonable estimate for retrofit. I mean, the idea is that the building's gonna be open and ripped apart, so that's the ideal time to do a retrofit, not, not after it's all buttoned up. No, not or if completely. you went into a buttoned up building that wasn't being you know, renovated for other reasons. Well, no. But in any case, uh, it's just something that I can't help but being skeptical over. We'd love to be able to put this system in here so we yeah. can make a contribution to our climate plan, but this amount clearly doesn't work and I'd appreciate if you'd go back and recheck here. But I did want to clarify one thing. When you said that the building is going to be open and ripped open to do that, that's not what all these renovations do. This building, these buildings for renovation, as you're building in the two, two, the two op options here, portions of the building were, but not all of it. Okay, well. So there are increased costs as you renovate and put these things Cindy. in. And oh, I just wanted to comment, the, I mean, well, it's a nice bonus. The reason for putting in full building cooling isn't to meet our climate plan. It isn't to save money. It's for the comfort and health and safety of our students and staff that are in those buildings every day. And in a time when they're in school in the fall, and I mean, we had parents bringing, delivering truckloads of fans to school in September. That's why we put cooling in the schools. And anything else is a bonus as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Lisa? Yeah, so I just, a couple, couple things. I, I wanted to echo what Chuck said, that uh, several of these renovations are not gutting and or opening up the whole building. So putting these systems in requires a level of renovation associated with that, so that's part of it. Um, the other thing to think about is we can, and this is thinking down the road, referendum, whatever option you end up, there are ways to think about multiple questions on a referendum. So if you go out with a base that doesn't have full cooling, you can always ask a second question if you are so inclined to say, would you in addition support full cooling for this value and um, uh, as part of the project? So nothing that has to be included now, you can strategize that in uh, going forward. Chris, are you calling ahead, in, folks? David. This question, a while back we were talking about going gas conversion. Whatever happened with that? It's a great question. I don't know where the town is at on that. Um, I know that in 
efficiency, the incentives, um, we have to stay away from uh, natural gas. Okay, for new construction. For new construction. It can still be used for backup, though. Correct. For existing renovation. Correct. Right, Matt has the latest on. Yeah, at this point, we, Unitel, right? yeah, we've been working on pulling together our BTU load and uh, size and uh, uh, the scale of our units that we have. So we've been getting that information to give to Unitil. Uh, the emphasis recently has been switched, and the focus has been really directed solely on this RV and sorry, the uh, the electric electrification side of it. So I think uh, you know I know Harriman's been working on that as the primary thing. So. If we need to switch that gear, we're going to have to, you know, step up those conversations. So if you're going to go from one to the other, uh, we need to know that fairly soon because you're talking roughly a million dollars to to get it get the service run to town, and then you're going to go from there. We've been waiting for an actual estimate on that, correct, Matt? Yeah, right. I know we had some estimates on the on the gas cost and delivery, but they didn't have an estimate the last time we right. heard from them. Yeah. Right, Caitlin. I just had a quick question specifically about the adding cooling to, as you said, a lot of these buildings are not being gutted. Parts of them are being renovated, but significant portions of them aren't being touched. I think it's been alluded to a few times over the course of this project that if you open a wall and find something, you are then obligated to fix it. And so adding full building cooling into a building like the middle school, I imagine would also expose us to significant risk in opening up walls that we did not expect to open. Is that accurate? Anytime we open up a building in renovation, we run that risk. So um, I would say any, any level of renovation, we, we will have that risk. The more we open it up, the, to your point, the greater the risk. Michael? But, oh, sorry. Are you done? And would it require opening up a significant amount, not a significant, based a on the significantly different larger addition of, of open walls in to, order to accomplish that? To, um, it would it would increase the amount we're opening up um, beyond what the scope is right now for uh, specifically B plus, um, but also also C minus, but uh, definitely B plus because there's less renovation there. Michael. Um, on, I'm, not a, I'm not a seasoned <laughs> cost estimator, um, but everything, it's, it, I'm looking at a project from 2019, and I know it's 2019 dollars in, in, in uh, Connecticut, in Nagatuck High School, which was 200,000 square feet of renovation, 200,000 square feet of VRF, and that was 1750 a square foot, that was, that was, um, that was a, a cost of 3.5 million for 200,000 square feet. I know that there's inflation, but is it really, I, can, there's no way we can go back and look at that. Is there any other way well, we could? We just talked about that we're gonna go back and look at it. But, but through like contractors and bring them in or, you know, how, how do we? Uh, we literally just bid a building with this. So we yeah. have recent numbers. We have multiple contractors, estimators looking, not contractors, but estimators looking at this um, that look at all different states. Um, we will go back and look at it so I can provide the clarity that people need to understand what's in that number. And if uh, on second look, there is a modification, we can let folks know. But I, I, I just wanted to add that I'd like the concept of multiple options in a in a referendum. I don't know if that's even possible here in, in Cape Elizabeth, but it, it's done in a lot of areas. Yeah. I mean, typically we see it in almost every project, especially when there's kind of a hey, this this feels like this would pass, and this mm -hmm. would this is a hey, we'd really like to have. Yes. Let's see if people will support it without tanking the whole project. Understood. Lisa, do you need us to say tonight whether we want full cooling included or not, or could you add that information at, at the bottom like you have previous? I, I'd like to know if it's going to be in the base number that we're presenting at the forum, or as a, in addition, we could consider this an addition to for this value. Um, so I would like to understand, because we need to set up the dollar amount per option and the tax impact, um, and then that 
we'll have the, uh, we meet with our hopeful team twice tomorrow to go over the outcome of this meeting. So we'll have them dig into that right away. Right. Yeah, we don't want to show a range. So that's the question we need to figure out right now. Do we say an additional cost or additional option in the forum? Patrick, Larry, then Cindy. Um, it's just proposal. Everyone, everyone's yeah. curious about cooling. This is a proposal I'd just like to throw out there. I'd like to, I think that we should have during the, the meeting coming up that we just do B, C, and E. No heating, no cooling. And then add it afterwards, maybe even ask during the forum, do you support something like any area that is heavily renovated in B and C to put cooling in, because that's going to be the cheapest time to do it, not heavy reno, because B, it's going to cost a lot more because there's not as much opened. When you open things up, it's going to be a lot less. And then if you were to build a new middle school, would you um, want that cooled? because that's brand new construction. So that's gonna be a little bit cheaper because it's all opened up and it's just part of the package. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that the, everyone might think about, because then maybe we can maybe get a little pulse of everybody. Um, maybe not so much, you know, we're not gonna put it on the survey, but um, when we have the form, maybe that's something we can kind of get a hand and get it like a straw poll. Um, and then we, then that way we'll have a hard you, yes You can or no. also do that as we develop the final option because we're going to have a forum in June to get yep. the get the read on folks if that's something they would support. I mean, would, whatever would I, option you're would going. Anyone think with. that was a good, bad, terrible idea? Larry, Cindy, yeah. then Corinne. Right, I would I would agree, Patrick. I don't think we should include full heating and cooling in these base numbers. That we need to visit this. I, I just want to say against again, I, I, I'm I'm shocked at the number. It, it doesn't work economically at the amounts we're talking. It simply does not work. The, the cost is astronomical compared to the benefit. Um, but I can say this, on individual systems, if we had individual heat pump systems for 60 classrooms at $20,000 a unit, that would be only 1.2 million, and half of that would be paid for by Efficiency Maine. That's why I'm so puzzled, Lisa and, and, and Chuck. I, I don't understand the massive cost of having yep. a centralized VRF system. And if it, in fact, is verified, then we should take a look at selectively putting these units into classrooms where they really matter, where the kids are going to spend most of their days and the faculty during the shoulder seasons when it gets hot in those rooms. And I, look, I'm as committed to anyone in this town to get electrification into our schools. I think we absolutely have to make some kind of commitment, but at this cost, at $80 a square foot, I'm staggered by it. And so we need to take a look at some alternatives to electrify individual rooms with heat pumps because, I mean, I can't imagine a single room is gonna cost much more than $20,000 to do. I, I really don't. So if you could please maybe completely you know, review that option, mm -hmm. I think it could be done for vastly less money. But for now, I don't think we should include it in the base cost because it elevates the expense for all of these dramatically, and I'm not sure we're getting what we, we need and, and, and it's cost efficient. Cindy? So, I, two comments. I think, um, I know it's not a question on the survey, but in the information sheet, with a survey that describes each option, I think if we go with estimates that do not include that, I think we should specify that it is not included mm -hmm. in the narrative. And then if people have feedback, that will prompt them to provide that feedback. So we don't have to ask them the question, but we have a narrative description that says, you know, this this offers all these things. It does not include, you know, heating, it, it does not include full cooling. Obviously it'll have heat. Um, and so hopefully that at least prompts people in their narrative feedback to give us some feedback. I do know that, um, you know, we received public comment and emails uh, following, you know, prior meetings where it was discussed on whether or not we do full cooling. And the feedback we did receive through both emails and in public comment at those meetings 
was that there was a strong desire for full cooling in these buildings. But I do understand the cost concern, and I think as much as we can encourage public feedback on it, um, the better. Corinne, then Penny. Um, I do like the idea of taking it out for our estimates now. And to echo Patrick and Larry, I think that we should either look at breaking it out by only cooling new construction where you have a more tight envelope and it's more efficient, and that can be, you know, a piece that's kept for a long time in the future. Or, like Larry said, specify which chunks of the program do we get the most value out of cooling, whether it's classrooms or large shared spaces or whatever it is. Penny? I guess I, um, I'm in support of taking the high cost of the uh, cooling out, but I would say that at this point it's imperative that we come up with a cost-effective solution for cooling. So if we're doing base costs, then okay, you can pull it out, but it, I think it's imperative that we have cooling in our schools, so we have to come up with a cost-effective solution to include. Thank you. David? Lisa, could you go back to the high school, the third floor? The, the high school, the third floor? Yeah, the one that you put the addition on. I yeah. don't know if that's first floor or the third floor. David, can I just finish up this conversation? Is this having to do with heating? And no, cooling? okay. I just finish. wanna, we're so close to getting that one. Okay. I think I've heard consensus to move it out of the base bid, Lisa and Emily. So I think we can move on from that. I think, I think this chart captures what we have heard thus far. I'm trying to update this as we go. We have inserted three repairs, three to six in the high school. We have crossed out E3.1. This chart does not show full cooling, but what we have heard is a request to go back and revisit the numbers with the team. Um, if they are verified, um, then what is the um, breakdown for cooling in only new construction? and or what is a strategy to be strategic about where we put this cooling to benefit the, uh, the students and teachers um, the most. Um, did I capture that? I think you did. Okay. Thank you. David, go ahead. If you could go to the Yeah, end. absolutely. And Chris, this might be a question for you. Can you blow up that area? Yep, right there. Yeah, just going over the cost. So I haven't been in school for a long time, but testing center, is that where kids take their tests now, or how does that, I never even heard of a testing center. Yeah, we have a lot of courses, or advanced placement courses, where there's several classes that would take the same test, or SATs, or Okay, SATs, SATs I remember. We, we don't have a large space that can offer a good testing environment. Um, so that's what that would offer. It also offer a good place for faculty meetings, staff meetings, or several classes to collaborate. So I could see that being used all day. Okay. Okay. Yep. I just never heard of one before. Thank you. And I think that was the staff, the faculty at the high school, that was their number one. Yeah, so that, that came out of our meeting with the faculty, um, specifically around we were looking at options where we could put that um, in the existing school, um, the only space that could accommodate that number of students was the library, and the library has already expressed their frustration with it being taken over for that testing on a regular basis, um, and, and didn't have as much support for that option that we had laid out with uh, kind of creating a space within a space in the library. So that's where this option came out for consideration. What, what what happened, maybe I missed it or something like that. There's a lot of numbers going by. We talked about there was a building down by the mm -hmm. play fields. And we were t what, what happened with that? Nothing, it's on this list for you guys to um, be able to consider. Um, and that's part of the high school considerations of, of scope. So it's all still there. It's whether you guys decide to okay. incorporate it or not. It's number 13, I think. Okay. I... Correct, number 13. Perfect. Patrick for that testing room uh, mm -hmm. conference area, if I may make a suggestion that you add two unisex bathrooms, because mm. that way that section of the school could be cut off. Mm -hmm. Outside people could use that school without going into the school, because you have a vestibule there, you can lock it down. So you could easily, after hours, that would be a good community place. Mm -hmm. I can tell you I'm saying that because we have a training room about that size of the fire station. 
And the I've, big Achilles I've met, heel. I've met in it before. Yes, the big Achilles heel of it is there's no bathroom. Yeah. So you have to come into our secured side of the fire department to use the facility. So if you added that to that area, I think it would become much more useful. Yep. And great suggestion. Hopefully, it won't cost three million dollars. <laughs> Um, I, I also, you know, th th think of things too that not just full cooling can be a, a, another question on the referendum. We've seen multiple. I think it, you don't want to do too many. You want to make sure it's really about your highest priorities. But if there are other things that you want to be able to kind of test the support of the community for some of these more then the things that aren't like dire needs, they're, they're nice to have, so you really would like to have them in an ideal world if you had all the money in the world. You can always consider some of these things as uh, sub-options uh, or second questions on the referendum, but they don't get tied to the number one question that is about whatever option you go forward with. So we, we've almost been going three hours. You've been mm -hmm. up there a long time. Is there anything else you need quickly before we maybe take five minutes to just yep. stand up and move around? So, um, I, I, while people are standing up and moving around, um, I want you to think about, does this capture what you want these three <coughs> options to reflect in the forum, both in regards to scope, um, in regards to the alternates, in regards to the high school scope? And if the answer is yes, that's great. We'll move forward with these. If you want to get up, move around, just think about it for a couple minutes and we'll come back. We welcome well, that as let's well. Let's do that. Let's think about that. Come back in five minutes and give you our answer. Perfect. Sound good? Yep. All right. Let's take five minutes.
Are we good? Are we on? All right, we're back. David, here we go. We're, we're, we're back. All right, Lisa, uh, we took a little break there, and you sent us away to uh, think about what you were asking. So, yes. so what do you need me, from us at this point? Let me recap what the homework assignment was during our leg stretching break here. Let me get this back up. Um, okay, so this is the, the chart um, that we have been building tonight off of where we started. Um, as of right now, this represents what we will for now call option B, C, and E. We have gotten rid of E 3.1. That decision has been made. We have added in repairs three to six to this table for the high school. That is reflected in this table and the totals. We need to understand, is this the scope for these options that want to be communicated in the ad the survey, and the forum, or do modifications need to happen to any of these? And if so, what are they? My specific questions would be around alternates. Right now we are identifying two alternates only for B plus. Does that, does that feel right? Um, is there any other, does that also wanna be carried in, in E3 or not? Um, and then in the high school, is that the scope we are moving forward with in these options? I'll pause there for reflection. So perhaps it would help us if we just ask one of those. At a time? At a time, okay. otherwise we'll do popcorn. Yep, all right. For um, clarification, I wanna understand alternates. Is the right size K-wing renovation and right size K-wing addition, should that be carried in concept option B? Can you um, explain it again real quickly what that yep. means? Yep, so what that means is right now your kindergarten classrooms are 20% undersized. Um, they are uh, closer to 800 square feet. Uh, we see 1,000 square feet in kindergarten based on the way they deliver their program. Um, and this would renovate the existing wing and add an addition, and the addition is needed in order to get to the six full-size classrooms with that renovation. Um, so that uh, those two line items provide you six right-sized kindergarten classrooms. So that's currently in B plus, it's currently in C minus, it's not in E3. It is included in the scope of C minus and it is not in E3, correct. Larry, you, you, you yeah, want to say I, something and then Cindy? Right, thank you. Um, I uh, took a look at those numbers, Lisa, as you know, and um, in looking at the average class sizes in the Pond Cove, or rather the elementary school, um, if you adjust for the actual number of students on average, we pretty much meet the state standard per square foot based on their internal number of uh, students per classroom and based on, on their nominal guideline size, with one exception, and that is the kindergarten, and that we have a significant shortfall in space per student in the kindergarten. Um, and I believe that that probably needs to ad be addressed, but we're not getting a lot for the money here. We're looking at um, over $3,300,000 to add about 1,000 square feet. and. Um, I, I just, could you just kind of explain th this option again and how it, how it will work? Yep, so if you go back up to the floor plans and we'll see it in option C. Um, maybe C, it might be up this way. There, it's in the form, okay. Excuse me, I'm gonna jump out of here so I don't make people dizzy by going through here. I'm gonna pull up option C, and I'm gonna start with the massing because what we need to understand is the amount of renovation that happens. This entire wing essentially needs to be got renoed. 
because we need to move all the walls in that space in order to right size those classrooms. So that's a gut reno to that space. And then it is a addition of this classroom and a hallway to meet the egress. It provides bathrooms in all of those spaces as well as in this addition. So in plan, this is what this looks like now. This is what will happen. So we need to move all of these walls in here and then add this. So it, a lot of the cost is in the walls then. Yeah, once you touch a wall, you're touching all the ceilings, the yeah. floor, everything. Casework, you name it. Essentially, you're gut renoing the wing, yeah. So does it do anything for positioning for the future? It provides you uh, correctly sized classrooms for your kindergarten, um, assuming your kindergarten stays in this location. Um, I mean, from a construction perspective. Does uh, it position us for, will that then be taken away or will um, In any of on? the um, phasing options, so uh, you mean long-term planning. Okay, so when we yes. look at the long-term planning, um, it depends on, on, on what you do. Um, in this, if you were to replace the middle school later on, I mean, all this stays and is, is renovated. If you decide to replace the elementary school, obviously you would take that off in time and, and redo that. Um, if we're thinking about, I'm gonna jump down to um, the option E3. It is not included right now in this option. Um, if you were to include it in this option and do a renovation addition here, and let's say later on do that portion of E3.1 we talked about of replacing that wing, it would not impact that, but you could do the kindergarten and that, that other wing too. So you have flexibility as how you go forward with that. Cindy, go ahead. And I, I think the question is more for you, Chris. What is the current educational need and educational impact of that space? Like, is that a space that is really an issue right now? Um, you mean the kindergarten wing? The kindergarten wing itself, because that's yeah. what we're, we're talking about. So yeah, I think that's a good question. I think having more space to allow for our kindergarten students and staff to do innovative uh, educational programming is important and vital, so yes. Um, Chris, how many, uh, or do we average now per class in kindergarten number of students? Um, I def I don't have it on my desk, but it's 16. 17. 16. Yeah. And I, I believe the, the state standard for kindergarten is 18. Um, is that the guideline? Uh, uh, I not There is no guideline published yeah. for it, um, but typically there's a ratio that they go with with right. staff to students. Well, in that, uh, they have the internal number that they are using, you know, uh, for each grade. Yeah, I don't remember what the internal yeah. number is for kindergarten off the top of my head. I think it was yeah, around that, okay. Well, you know, my, my only concern is that I'd like to see this resolved, but it is that uh, it's a very expensive amount of investment to essentially solve a thousand square foot problem. Well, it's more than a thousand square foot problem because it's providing 200 square feet to each of those classrooms. So it's more like 2,200. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, feet. right? Double that, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I was thinking 100. It's 200, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, and I, I'll have to look again, Lisa. But I think one of those rooms in particular is very small. Correct, and we've turned that into the to the um, uh, special services area here. We did not make it a classroom. Thanks. It is incredibly small. And, and Larry, the school board, our school board policy uh, for kindergarten is 14 to 18. Yeah, okay. I mean, I mean, look, the issue comes down with all of these rooms is that it's one thing to have the state standard. It's another thing to have smaller classes. So you can have a smaller room to accommodate smaller classes. But I think kindergarten is fairly close to the informal number that the state mm -hmm. uses for classroom sizing. And as a result, I, we have a shortfall of, of, of space per student when you consider size of the rooms and the number of kids. But again, it, it's um, three something million dollars. Uh, but I'm, I'm inclined to think that, you know, we, we should see if we have any agreement on whether that is included in the base number or deferred, deferred 
for some later consideration after the initial round here of uh, cost estimating. Corinne? Um, to answer the question directly, I, I like the way it is now that we show the kindergarten changes in our addition and reno options and not in our new middle school option. So don't show it in E, but show it in B and C? Which I think is what you're showing, right? Is right now it is shown in my chart, yes, that is what is shown in the totals, correct? I would support that. Michael. I'm going to just go back to that chart so we can all see that. Is, is there an option? I, I, first thing I'll say is I have um, a six-year-old who was in kindergarten last year, had a really great experience. Um, is there um, that, that I, I know exactly the room you're talking about that's too small. Is there a way to really simply address that? Well, we'd have to take square footage away from the neighboring uh, spaces that are already undersized. Or, or add a new classroom like you propose, but not touch All the, the others will still be undersized, though, though compared to the 1,000 square feet. Um, so I guess it's a question you guys have to determine. Do you want to right-size all of them to 1,000, or do you want to just bring that one up to the 800 square feet that the others are? I don't know what the cost is, but... It's a small addition, so it's going to be a high dollar per square foot because um, there's going to be a lot of work that goes in that one small area. Um, uh, but it will be it will be less. But I think the the fundamental question you need to determine is what is what is what are you trying to solve for kindergarten? And is it space? Then you need to. You, I would think you would bring it up to the higher to space. Keep, I'm inclined to keep it and, personally. Yeah, can, you got to think about kindergarten too. Yeah. Is one of the the programs to where they truly take a play-based model, a oh, project-based yeah. model. They are in zones all over the classroom. They have to have that flexibility. I get it. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I am personally inclined to uh, keep that in. in uh, I don't know how others feel, but... Um, in in which, which of the options, B as and, shown B here? B and C. B and C. Yeah. 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 Also, I think if you're going to keep the... Uh, kindergarten renovation in B plus, you should include it in E3. That's what you guys have to determine. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I... Uh, I think that when it comes to, we talk a lot about the passability of E. I think that there needs to be just as much talk about the passability of B plus, and if we're not including as much as we can in it, we're going to lose the other side if, if, if they would even support B plus, which I think is, is not a guarantee. So I would... In, I would suggest including it just because I think it increases the likelihood that it actually passes, at least from the um, yeah. from the other end of the spectrum. B or no, no, I'm talking about B+. Plus. B plus. I agree with Corinne that I don't think we should include it in E3 because I think E3 is the solution where we are trying to solve a long-term problem with a long-term plan, and it does require sacrifices and it does require spreading things out, and I think that would be but, part of the calculus. And remember, <laughs> there's still time. We're going to make adjustments. We're going to get feedback. We don't have to decide. That's, that's true, but the bigger picture for me is if, if these things are, are they vital or are they not vital? And... <laughs> I mean, you could make an argument. Every, every kid in every single one of the situations that we're trying to fix is going to say that the situation they're in is vital and needs to be fixed. We, we can't, not a single one of these options is going to leave every right. person feeling it, like all the vital solutions have been dealt with. Is it good with. to have? Is it vital? There's differences, right? There's yeah. differences. So is it a nice to have, a good to have, or is it essential? I would say this is impactful, very impactful in learning. Um, and okay. I haven't given much opinion tonight. I'm trying to I understand. facilitate. <laughs> I, 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 You've done I, well. I, uh, thank you. I lean towards including it in E. Um, I think it's important space. Those are our first learners, and giving them uh, a really effective learning environment matters. Um, 
And we can all, we're going to revisit all of this. We can always revisit. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, let me just ask, could you update the totals if we add this in, Emily? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I've so been doing it see, live all along. You can see the amount. Yep. Uh, let me just, I'm going to just take it down so that I can um, work on it. Give uh, us a, to, uh, you know, a total for B plus and C and adding it to E3, which I believe it should be added. If we're going to add it to It's C. already in C, just so you know, and I'll I mean, add it. I mean, I'm sorry, it. In, in E, right? I'll add it to E. Right. Patrick, did you have something? Yeah, uh, to Larry's point earlier, not trying to say three plus million dollars is short money, but um, as we pay the bond down, that seems like something that could easily be picked up fairly quickly, and the bond could be reestablished to that amount. Seems like it's a it's a renovation that seems like it could probably be done in the summer, so it doesn't really impact the school that much. So I think maybe once the bond gets paid down, that's something that could easily be added in, back in. And I understand. At a, at, at a different time. At a different time, but I'm saying use the same bond, but as we pay it down, take it back out because it's a relatively small um, renovation. And I think probably it could be done maybe in a summer break or fairly, you know, that we're not going to upset the kindergartners too much. I think we may we may get there, but yeah, we don't have to decide that tonight. We're all going to we're going to be thinking of all sorts of solutions. Corinne. Um, this is kind of my larger question that I've been trying to weigh as we put these three options forward, and especially thinking about the survey. I have two kind of conflicting thoughts. One is I kind of want to have the cost of E be comparable to C, to see what kind of feedback that would give us from the community. My other conflicting thought is I do want to have E at a higher price point than C to see what kind of feedback that would give us. Um, so that's kind of what I'm weighing when I'm looking at what do we take in and what do we take out. I don't know what gives us better information or feedback from the community. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my conflicting thought. Anyone else on this topic? So I just want to point out, I, this slide I have added it in. You can see the bottom line uh, with it. I'm going to go back to the other slide here in a second so you can see it without. This is with. This is without. Thank you, Cindy. A um, couple things. Um, I do have a concern putting this out there with E at a higher number than the prior referendum. Um, and, I mean, I know that's reality, but that, that you know, in, including um, the kindergarten is part of the E concept. Although we, I mean, and, and again, this is just for this part, and we can still move things around. Um, so without I, would be this, and on, uh, without, is this under? But we all, and we also talked about kind of that long-term plan that could potentially involve more of the 3.1 ideas. This could also be part of that um, if we were looking at an E scenario. Um, and then one other comment on this slide would just be um, on the high school repairs, just specify zero to three years. Oh, okay. And yep. Three to six years, just to know what that's talking about. But, um, oops. Okay, so we, I'm hearing a divide between what to do with, uh, it sounds like clearly I'm hearing B plus, C minus, include the, the mm -hmm. kindergarten scope. Um, I think we need clarity, I know we need clarity on what to do with E around the kindergarten alternate. And I'm, I'm flexible, I, mean, I just tossed those ideas out there, but I would support either direction on it for E. Can I ask about the other things that are happening to Pond Cove, moving the admin office, et cetera, if, if, if it seems like that was baked in as a need to have versus like updating the kindergarten wing as a nice to have, and in, in my head, frankly, they'd probably be, probably be flipped. Um, the admin addresses the safety and security and having the admin directly adjacent to the secure vestibule 
um, and is allowed to have that cone of vision out to the site. The other complication you have is when you replace the middle school and that option, having the entrance where it is now, it, you can't get the parking over as close to that area, um, which is part of the reason why it was moved to, to the back um, of the school. I guess just generally, is there a way to take from the, the other side of the, the renovations as a, as a trade? For the kindergarten wing versus i mean really all, all that we've done here i'll pull it up yeah no i'm gonna pull it up no i don't follow what you're saying chuck okay um so essentially in and let me go to a different one this is hard to read on these site plans i'll go down to the floor plan and see or sorry e So this is E3, forever known as E now. Um, we're essentially adding this section here, and 75% of that is administration. And then this is your entry vestibule and corridor, and then we are adding this STEM program. We could, we could take the STEM area off, but we're gonna take out you know maybe 1,000 square feet. Um, but that's about the size of adding that one classroom over there, not, not accounting for the renovation. Um, but you could consider that. Um, you could look at not renovating um, the learning commons and just focus on the admin and the entry um, and free up some of that scope to go over, over there. Cindy. In this scenario, what happens to is that gray that little gray block where the old office was what happens to that office space so this is upstairs when we go okay. downstairs it is renovated into a special education classroom okay so that is already used for a classroom yep. okay lisa could you talk you it's actually I, I mean in this one it's one two three four five six it it can be used as a swing space for kindergarten as well, because we're not renovating it per se in the E option. Lisa, the could you go back to the cost page for yeah. each of the options? Yeah, let me just, sorry to keep hopping out, but I don't want to make people nauseous going through all these slides. Um, I, I assume you're talking about this one? Yes, right. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at B and C. I'm just trying to. I'm, not I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm not reconciling the numbers uh, here. Uh, the base total is um, 61,469, and we that did not include the uh, zero to three year. It does. It does. Okay. It does in. So, in so, hold uh, on. It does in the elementary, middle school. It does not in the high school. So those okay. options up there are for elementary, middle school, as the the header. Okay, so so the total added to that is 15 million approximately, right? Well, you have the total down here for the high school. Yeah, so so 16, right? Okay, and then the uh, uh, so that just breaks down the uh, sections. The locker rooms are included in that particular total there. Okay, all right. So is my um, math not right? Yeah, I don't think that's coming out right. Okay, uh, we can uh, rerun it. See, I, think that there's some math error here. I, there's something when we carried these spreadsheets over, some, some of the numbers I think got transposed it's incorrectly. It's about $86 million. Yeah, it's 81, uh, yeah. I, I think. I 81. It should be about 80 million okay. at most. We'll read, can you redo the, can you just yeah. uh, double check those, Emily, and let yeah. me know which ones are off? Yeah. If you see others, let me know. I, I, we uh, had a master spreadsheet that was right, but when it came into the PowerPoint, I think they yeah, accidentally that, got it. That clearly isn't right. Well, look, my thought is um, I'd be inclined to delay a decision and go uh, with the base amounts here on the alternate um, for the um, kindergarten. I, I, I'm, just a, I'm a bit concerned about the cost. These facilities have served us well. That is the newest building. It was built in 2004, it's only 20 years old, and completely gutting it and 
spending a lot of money on walls and an addition at, at $3.3 million just seems like an awful lot for the return that we get on investment. And we do have class sizes that are smaller than the internal number used by, by the state for, for sizing rooms. And I, I don't believe that, you know, we should have too large a problem remembering that we had an additional 100 students in the same facilities just 10 years ago. And we, got, we, we handled it well, and we have 100 fewer today. And I'd just be inclined to just defer that. I'm not saying I wouldn't necessarily support it, but I think we have to be very cost conscious here um, because we are escalating costs for each of these options, and I think it'd be best to defer it. For the alternates? So do you and, want me to? Uh, well, for B and C, and we don't have it presently in E. So I would, I would back it out of the base and C minus is the proposal? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, we can revisit this. Um, it's not a huge amount, but the cost effectiveness of it is really, um, you know, a question in my mind. So I, we've heard a, a couple different things in regards to the kindergarten, and we've heard to include it in all three. We've heard to include it in B plus and C minus only um, to differentiate the approaches between ad reno and this um, uh, replacing a school approach that the E puts in that's different than B and C. And then um, recently we have heard uh, a request to consider taking it out of B plus, C minus, and E. Um, and so, um, I don't know, Chris, if you want to help me facilitate um, input um, or if somebody has a recommendation they want to come forward with. I just want to say that um, once we address the uh, cooling uh, estimate, um, heating cooling estimate, then you may be able to have a conversation about adding something in. I, I think we keep adding things in um, and I'm not saying that the kindergarten is not important. I'm just saying that we're escalating costs and we've already identified a place where we could potentially reduce costs. So if we can fix that, uh, address that, then come back and have a conversation about kindergarten. So in general, if I, if I were to rephrase that in another way, and maybe it's the way that I've heard it, I heard it was, don't consider add alternates at this time. Let's focus on the base for the elementary middle school portions of the options and the base for the high school in these options. And then we can talk about other considerations as we move forward. Is that generally what yeah, I'm concerned? I'd put that in a parking lot that we can bring forward after. The alternates in the parking yes. lot. Yep, okay. Yep. Tim, are you uh, out there? Oh, I lost him. He went for his other martini. <laughs> we uh, maybe do a straw poll here. Uh, I saw a lot of heads nod on that, but I, I want to make sure. I know. That, so popular. I know Michael seemed to agree with that. David did. Larry did. Corinne, where are you at? I think I'm still at my original. Keep it for B and C and not an E. Me too. Hey, Chris, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Oh, I don't know. I was muted there for quite a while. You probably were happy I was, but uh, <laughs> um, I would have a I would have a tendency to I agree with what uh, how Penny has uh, stated this. I think it's an important issue. I think it's kind of hard for us to communicate to the town how we're going to address it with one of the options and not all of them. It does seem to be as Larry studied this a lot. The class sizes and the enrollments and stuff. It does seem like it's the one uh, area of all, all the class sizes seem to be pretty good in pretty good size for the number of kids in them. But the kindergarten does seem to be uh, the one that needs it the most. So I don't think we should ignore it, but maybe we can move on and maybe park and lot it for a little bit. Patrick, where are you at with that? Thanks, Tim. I would put it into everything but E as of right now. So B and C? Yes. Cindy? Yeah, I, I would support having it um, in at least one of them. And I think it's, it's also something that by calling out as a difference between options, we get feedback 
in the survey. So um, having oh, it just like, I'm, for example, having it in C minus, but nothing else, and we can indicate that we've right sized it in C minus and calling attention to that, for, just yeah. for example. I could support that in C minus, but not B plus. Yeah, that's, and then we get public feedback on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I, mm -hmm. there's a lot of com side conversations. Sorry. So I'm having trouble following. Uh, what happened down here is, Cindy was suggesting putting it in at least one option. Larry thought that was a good idea and suggested C minus. Are we good with that, Corinne? David? I'm good with that. Michael? Caitlin? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna, all of this we will revisit. Patrick? Good, good. So, all right, that, C plus. It's only in C, it's already in C, so I'm gonna back it out, um, not included here. Not in B plus, not yep. in E. Yep, we're getting that. I just, I wanna walk away with a reflection I, of what we heard. I had a comment because one of the questions you asked was about the concepts as a whole and any modifications that we needed. Is that a different question that are we moving on to? I just didn't want, I had a comment on that and didn't want to lose it in the aftermath of going through all of these individual line items. Um, I, I want to caution that we do any wholesale changes to any of these options as there's no time to make those. Not a wholesale change, okay. just uh, reiterating the public's request that every single option has some type of long, long term uh, cost implications of the 20 year, 40 year, et cetera. Just reiterating. What does it do so, and what does it not do? Yeah. I, I want to be clear. Uh, we haven't been asked to provide that information. My understanding. We're not going to. Okay. Uh, finance chair. Be done by Moores and Cabot. Yeah. Perfect. All right. What I'm else? just updating our chart okay. really quick. We'll take a, a moment to ponder. <laughs> are are is Harry going to? Are you guys going to? So we have no. Unlike the Harriman numbers, we are not gonna have a, a second review of, of that estimate. Of what? Sorry, you said you weren't doing it. So the- We're going to get numbers from, from Harriman and in order that we can do the modeling with Moores and Cabot. But every number that Harriman does, our owner's rep right. verifies. Matt, we yes. we, we talk to these people, yeah. so. That data uh, will be input by Moores and Cabot in their model. And then you'll, and you'll also look at that the same way you do it for Harriman. Okay. Chuck, why don't you come up, please? <clears throat> we, as we said before, we provide with Harriman's estimators. We verify what they do. We do our own independently. Then we connect. We come up with the estimates in today's dollars with some projections as you go into construction and what costs would be over the next three to four years as you're into construction. We escalate the numbers to reflect inflation that we know and that. As you get into the calculations that the Finance Committee wants to do with present value or whatever you want to call it over the next 20 to 40 years, that's not something we have any expertise in. It's just that's what economists do. So that's why they're working with Morrison Cabot. We'll, we'll review it, but I won't have much to add. Okay, I think I have updated. I no, I know I have updated this number. Um, so this reflects what we just heard, um, builds upon what we heard earlier. The change here, um, and, and Larry, I did go back and correct the math on B plus previously, but now it's been changed again because we took out alternates. Um, B plus does not have the right sizing of the kindergarten through renovation or addition. It is included in C minus as it has been in the base. It is not included in E, and the numbers reflect that.
does this feel like what we want to go forward with as what we're calling a base? There's no, I mean, I don't even need to put alternate. I can just put a note that says C minus includes a right size kindergarten, um, six right size kindergarten classrooms and the others don't. If you don't want to have alternates in there, it's just here's the base for the elementary middle, here's the base for the high school and these three options. I think that's where we. I like it. I, I think we're really at a good, good point here with this. Good. We, we, I think covered the key components, um, and we have a baseline number. We just need to make sure that uh, the community understands that there will be some modest adjustments to mm -hmm. these numbers going forward. Make that clear in our communications. But mm -hmm. I, I think it lays out a good structure at three fundamental levels that are distinct mm -hmm. and uh, people have to make a judgment in the end what the best is in terms of uh, the level that our community will support at the polls in November. You guys should be proud of yourselves that you arrived at this in one night. This is the, this is the meat of what we need. I'm just going to check our to-do list, but I'm pretty sure we're there. Um, so, all right, let's get back here. So. Uh, I know what we're naming them. We have determined E. We have figured out what high school scope. The matrix information is in there. Give us feedback on that. If, if there's edits you want to see for the forum, because we're going to have that in the forum. You're going to give us edits on the text for the ad through Google Docs. And we've talked about the dashboard. So thank you. We are done. Thank you, thank you Lisa. I just add one thing. The the high school field house, would there be a way, would the board be adept to keep it in the scope but not fund it and see if we can get some private funding donations? Because we, while they're doing construction, will be the cheapest time we're ever going to do this. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is I was uh, some, we were helping the ladder truck reset the nets from the um, storm at Hannaford Field and I was approached by several uh, parents that were watching their sons play uh, practice lacrosse and they think that they can get enough money to f fund it. Would that be something that the board would be ample to that we do not fund it but maybe keep it in the scope and see if we can get it funded through donations? I'd That's what we did with the auditorium last time. It was a separate referendum question that just said, would you support raising public funds for this purpose? So let's, I suggest we see what we get back for feedback from the survey and ideas like that, or others are going to come to the surface, and then we can try to strategize from there. But that would be wonderful to get private funding for something like that. Yeah. Let's hope, David. Everybody go buy a Powerball. All right, we're doing well. Uh, just past nine o'clock. Uh, Michael, you're up for a communications update. Then Larry for finance, and then I think a little quick update on the forum, and then public comment, and then we're out of here. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, it's important that we got to the point that we did tonight, um, particularly with respect to the communications and in, in, in the survey. I believe now that um, we've essentially finalized the, the, the survey, you can go to the capeelizabeth.com website. Um, actually, no, there were some revisions, sorry. Uh, we're, we're expecting final revisions on the survey um, as early as tomorrow uh, based on some feedback, but we, we, we came together well this morning in this subcommittee and, and uh, I think made some really nice improvements. Um, to, to, to that survey. At this point, it feels like that could be out the door by the end of next week, potentially. We have a lot to do um, still in terms of finalizing some of the content around the, the insert, but I believe we've laid out a process tonight by which we could finalize content by Monday. And assuming we can, by the end of next week, uh, what day is that? Sorry. Um, the fifth. That's the fifth. Um, that could be in everyone's uh, mailbox by the start of the following week, so prior to, um, prior to uh, spring break, which would be uh, amazing. So 
um, that's the that's that's the big thing as far as um, the website Cape Elizabeth SBAC.com. There's a couple updates on there. One promoting the upcoming public forum, as well as school tours to be held Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m. Um, I hope those are well attended. I'll I'll, I'll be there. Um, and then the uh, the courier that just came out. I think I got mine yesterday. Uh, thankful for the courier for publishing an extensive analysis of of the needs of the school building along with a full page color uh, advertisement um, that I think does a really good job at a high level describing what those needs are. So uh, with the survey, one of the things, it's not just about understanding cost and, and the impact of revaluation and those things. Uh, we do, I do believe we're gonna learn a lot about how well we've uh, been able to communicate with, with the town. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to those results. I don't know if anyone else has anyone, anything to add. Thank you, Michael. So one thing on the survey, I asked Penny and Cindy, like, can we get out the electronic signs or put something up at the transfer station saying, because a lot of people, that's where they're seeing it. Yeah. But I guess there was issues with it on other things. Cindy? Thanks for... Thanks for noting that. We, we should coordinate early next week, Chris, if there's anything we can do across the town. We didn't get into that yep. today. We will utilize every avenue we can. Um, last go around, we had some trouble doing that, but I, I sense perhaps we're, we're in a more cooperative place, so we will try to use everything we can to get the word out. And it's, there's gonna be mail hitting every mailbox in right. town, so I feel very confident we'll get um, the sample, the, a, re, a representative sample of, of all parts of the town, and we'll we'll um, we'll get the word out. Okay. I do think we have to broadly advertise it, though, on social, like on on uh, electronically available Every, methods, everything. because a lot of families will be out of town for spring break. True. Um, uh, and I'll just add a couple of things on the um, one thing to get the word out about right now, and if we could get the the sign at the transfer station or the, the public safety sure. sign. School tours, getting people in the doors on April 6th is really important. I think there are a lot of people that haven't seen the schools, haven't been on a tour, so I would encourage people to show up for that, and I think doing everything we can to, to get people there. And um, I, I do think, um, and I know Caitlin and I have been kind of doing it, we, we do have a Facebook page for the building committee, and we can, work more in, um, like I created event invitations for the forum and the public tours, and the more we can just echo what we're doing everywhere else on our social media pages, oh. that would help too. Thank you for reminding me on that. We didn't, again, we didn't discuss it this morning, but I will write, I'll draft tomorrow a, a quick email newsletter and I'll ask the, the town to send that out broadly, yeah. inviting people, not just to the forum, but also to the, to the tour. Okay. I'll do and, that tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, thanks for all the work of the communications subcommittee. Um, and Larry. Thanks to Emily, too. And Emily and for... Dodd, because she's been amazing. The, <laughs> that just made it all worth it, didn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, Larry, finance update. Please. All right, thank you, Chris. Um, we met this afternoon and we discussed two tasks that have been assigned to Moores and Cabot. One is to update tax impacts of the three preferred options. Um, that will consist of um, using the projected uh, tax base and tax rate for the new fiscal year. Uh, Matt says they should have the numbers buttoned down within a few days. So those will be the inputs for uh, those calculations. And it will be done on the basis of two tranches. Um, so the bonds will be split approximately 50-50 over two years. That will help um, mitigate uh, the, the impacts of the total increase that would be spread over two years instead of uh, felt in the first year. That is subject to possible change depending on market conditions, but at least that's the assumption going forward until such time you're ready to actually issue the bonds. Um, and um, the second portion of this was 
uh, a long-term cost analysis that Moores and Cabot would do for each of the options. Um, we're going to be considering both the cost side and the capacity to pay. So we're going to be looking at it and considering factors such as net present value, which looks at the true value of dollars based over time in, in an investment. And we're going to be looking also at what is known as constant or real dollars, where you adjust a basket of dollars into the future and calculate what those dollars are able to buy. And um, so that's just another factor we've asked them to consider. Um, and we'll take into account all of the cost data that's provided by Harriman and Heary um, and any other suggestions that Mr. Katera has who possesses a PhD in economics and has good capacity in Moores and Cabot to hopefully assist with this effort. It is a very challenging task because we're looking at trying to make projections out 20, 30 years, and it's anyone's guess, really, what inflation is going to be. And this is what leads to really crazy numbers that when you try to make these estimates, we're going to try to find some way to better contain and perhaps get more, you know, reliable insights, but it's not going to be easy, and we could end up just uh, maybe looking at the additional projects that may be needed on top of any of the three options so that we'll know if we do B, we're going to need this over the years. If we do C, we'll need this and so forth. We're just going to have to take this and work with Moores and Cabot over the next few days and see what we can come up with by the time we go out to, uh, with the mailing and the fact sheet that will accompany the uh, questionnaire. So that's what we accomplished today. And we talked a bit about the uh, tax calculator. Oh, yes. Getting that um, online for when information goes out as well. Right. That, that fortunately, is very simple. What we'll do is uh, Mike will arrange to take a uh, formula that would be developed by Christy Bradbury, our town finance uh, director, that will be put on a website. You'll go in. You'll uh, be able to look up the value of your home if you don't have it. Uh, it'll be a link to our assessor's database. You just put in your value, and it'll tell you the number. It'll say how much you're going to be paying first year, second year, and then out several years. And monthly. It'll be, it'll be money, and it'll be broken down into annual and monthly, yes. and it will also show a percentage. So it'll, it'll be available online for anybody who will want to actually see the direct impacts on their own taxes rather than just relying on a median uh, home value, which doesn't mean a lot, honestly, to a lot of people. Does that give the first year impact, or does it? Yeah, it would be out several years. It'd go out several years. Yeah, okay. right. Yeah, but as I said, the first year will be half of the total amount because we'll have right. two tranches of bonds. So if you had a ten percent increase, it'd be five the first year, five the second right. for a total of ten, and then that amount remains the same because it, it, we're, we're recommending level principal and interest for these loans because that reduces the impact on tax increases. Can I ask a clarifying question of the, admittedly, I have not attended nearly as many finance subcommittee meetings as the rest of the committees. And I was, when I mentioned that thing about mitigation for seniors' taxes, uh, I, 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 and you were like, of course we've done that. And I think there's a gap then between the finance committee and the communications committee. And if, I think that if, if we believe that there will be some type of mitigation, that would be a very, wonderful and essential piece of information to put on that back page where we have the tax calculators. And I guess perhaps it's too premature to be able to do that, but if we at least had a, a, a asterisk in there that said that the town, that you guys are actively working on that, I do think that that would be a, a, a very valuable addition to that. We have a program in place to address uh, taxes and especially for people who are uh, more income challenged, where there's a program in place and during the budget uh, season, uh, or now, we're actually looking at increasing the amount that we would, um, um, I guess, uh, cover, so to speak, or reduce their taxes. By. So I guess this is like misinformation even hitting me, is that I had been the, the informed that that had been- The program's been in place for three years, maybe four, actually five. I thought reading on Facebook that that had expired and it wasn't going to happen. No, that was a state program yeah. where 
where uh, so I'm my sorry. only point here is that my confusion is probably not confined to me. And mm -hmm. if we could if we could write some short thing that either sums this up or tells people that where they, they could go to find where they might see if they're eligible for mitigating factors, mm -hmm. that, that would be an important piece of information to put on our, our, our back page that has tax impacts. Do we have uh, real estate on the back page? I think we do have real estate on that. Don't we, Emily, have real estate on that? That would be... Finance page? Uh, yeah. The f yeah, more than the page. other ones. That would need to come from Clint um, and uh, work with Matt around that. And uh, Clint also has, I believe, he has an information page, which he's presented several times uh, relative to other programs that uh, relate to people who may be on uh, fixed income or income challenge. I think that would just be really valuable to be able to, yep. to, to put factor into people's calculus. Yep. Go ahead, Lisa. This conversation reminded me that we never unparked the high school scope with the matrix. We we're gonna revisit that matrix with the dots and determine if that included elementary and middle school only for now or if it also included high school, I would like to put out a um, proposal for, re for consideration that the matrix, how it meets all those needs, focuses on the elementary and middle school, and then we list what the scope is for the high school. Yes. I think that's fine. I'm seeing lots of head shaking. Yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Good, thank Thanks. you, Lisa. All right, thank you, um, Finance, for all of your work as well. Um, we were going to update on the uh, format for the forum. We did not get that, to that this morning in the two and a half hour communications committee. Um, but the last forum, we actually had Penny and Cindy open and welcome. I think that makes sense again. We had uh, Lisa share the options, three options. Matt can share a financial update um, and then move to public comment. Is that, that's the format we used last time. Um, it, it worked sense. then, I think it'll work now. I think it's a good format. <laughs> good. All right, public comment. Al, you've been with us all day. Anything you'd like to say? No, thank you. I'm so sorry to interrupt myself. I had a great time. Thank you for your commitment thank to you. being here. <laughs> all, right. all right, anyone uh, online that would like to speak, please indicate so, raise your hand. All right, seeing none, um, can I have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? All right, good night, everyone.